Good evening, everyone. Hope I'm audible. Hello. All right. Am I audible? Good evening, everybody. Just let me check with the audio if I'm audible or not. Hello, hello. Guys, can you just confirm if I'm audible or not? Okay, perfect, perfect. All right. <clears throat> Good evening, everybody. So this is Dr. Maruti here. I'm here for your surgery revision, right? So in this point of surgery revision, see what I'm trying to do here is first, let me give you an idea. So every single exam I have seen students leaving out this part of the surgery that is urology. So here you can any doubts you can just put it in the comments. I respond to those no problem. So every single exam this is what we have been noticing. Many students leave out this part of the surgery and this is the most important part I can tell because so this is a very small content. Though it is a small content all the questions most of it will be from the notes itself that is first advantage. And the second advantage is that see we know that for sure. 100% sure that we are going to get the questions from these particular topics. only. So once we know that we should be very, very clear about this. Okay. So since I have said that we will start with the urology. Now urology here again for you people to make the content easier. So we can even provide you people with the same thing of these slides also I will give you people. So that also won't be an issue, okay? So let me just confirm with our team once. If everything is fine, then we'll dive into the topic. Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. Okay, we got a green signal from our team as well. Let's continue to the surgery discussion, okay? So it's very easy topic. Okay, let's start with the anatomy. So all of you know anatomy of uh, kidney. So in the kidney, there are two important aspects. One is filtration system, one is collecting system, we can say, okay? So collecting system is the place where urine is getting collected. That is usually renal pelvis, that is usually renal pelvis. So renal pelvis, this is the area of the kidney where what is getting collected, urine is getting collected. And kidney can be divided into cortex and medulla. And again, in the nephrons also, you have cortical nephron as well as medullary nephron. Now, with that much being said, see this ureter, so these uh, kidneys are connected to something called as ureter. Now, this is a very important point to be remembered twice because, see, we, we all know that there are two ureters, okay? So, both the ureters will come and join way into the bladder, come and join way into the bladder. From the bladder, what will happen? All the urine will get accumulated in the bladder. From there, it will go into the urethra and go out. So, all of us know that. But when you look at a urethra also, there are some important points here. So look here, we have membranous urethra, membranous urethra, okay. Then the urethral part which is going through the prostate, we call it as a prostatic urethra, okay. So the part of urethra which is going through a, very good, which is going through a prostate is prostatic urethra. So what is the importance of this prostatic urethra? See, look here, this prostatic urethra, Whenever there is a benign prostatic hyperplasia, it will get compressed. Now, what is the use of remembering this membranous urethra? Whenever there is a perianal trauma, perineal trauma, ah, okay, what will happen is that this part of the urethra will get ruptured usually, membranous urethra, and also sometimes which can also involve bulbar urethra. The part of the urethra which is going, which is going in the penis, we call it as a penile urethra. Now, look here, there are two openings. One opening at the level of bladder, Okay, internal meatus, one opening at the outside, okay. Among which the smallest one is the external ureth <coughs> urethral meatus is the narrowest opening of the urethra, external urethral meatus, okay. Let's continue. 
So when we are talking about urethra, see in the male urethra it is about 20 centimeter, okay, and diameter about 6 to 8 mm, 6 to 8 mm. Now why we should know this? Because look here, if the diameter of the urethra is this much, okay. Now for example, I want to pass a endoscope, that is urethroscope, okay. So if I am passing an endoscope, the endoscope size should be smaller than that of, uh, the diameter should be smaller than that of what? Very good, that is urethra. Okay, so this, this is a very important. Okay, diameter is about 6 to 8 mm. So, narrowest is the membranous urethra. Okay, widest is prosthetic urethra. Now, don't get confused. Narrowest and widest. Which part of the urethra is wide? That is fine. But meatus means opening. Okay, so when we are talking about opening, the external opening is smaller. Okay, which part of the urethra, like prosthetic, this is there. Na? So, that part of the urethra in that, uh, which part of the urethra is wide? So, widest is prosthetic urethra. Widest is what? Prosthetic urethra. Now, once I have said this, please look here. In the urethra, when the urethra is passing through the, through the prostate, so we can take a section of the prostate and look here because this is also very important. Uh. So, in the prostate gland, we have how many lobes? Five lobes. How many? Five. Very good. How many are there? Five. Among the five, what we should know? So there are there are two lateral lobes. These blue ones are lateral lobes. The most here yeah, green one which I have highlighted is called as what is that? Very good anterior. And this, this is called as posterior. And the pink part, whatever we have highlighted here, that lobe is called as very good. What is that lobe, my dear students? Median lobe. What is that lobe? Median lobe. So why we should know this again also? Again, it is important for us to know because of one major reason when we are doing a digital rectal examination. Okay. All right, let's continue. So in the urethra, in the urethra, be it in the urinary system, throughout the urinary system, we have some important investigation. Now, I can assure you there can be one MCQ for sure in this part. Okay, for sure one MCQ in this particular slide alone. Okay, what is that? So look here, whenever we are talking about, whenever we are talking about kidneys, right? So kidneys are like this, very good. Renal pelvis is there. Okay, from there what is coming out? Ureters are coming out. Okay. So, for the upper urinary tract, we need to know the anatomy of the upper urinary tract. Okay. For example, if there is a stone, okay, if there is a congenital defect, for such kind of things, most of the preferred investigation is intravenous pyelography. Intravenous pyelography. Now, intravenous pyelography is having two types, among which most commonly done is the antegrade. Means what is it? IVP is a type of which method? Antegrade method of urology. Okay? Okay. All right. Now, for the lower urinary tract, we have cystogram. Okay? Now, for urethra, we have retrograde urethrogram. Basically, it's very simple. We are taking one endoscope. We are going from the urethra and going into the bladder. If we are going into the bladder, then it is a cystoscopy. Cisto <coughs> and if we are doing the contrast study of the bladder, we are calling it as a cystogram. So, cystogram is a contrast study. Okay, what we are going to do here, very simple. Be from the penis, from the penis look here, what we are going to do is that from the external meatus, I will send in the contrast. Now, this contrast will go all the way into the bladder. Now, I will take a photo of the bladder. That means I will take a radiograph called as cystogram. All right. Now, there is one most interesting mixturing cystourethrogram, which is also called as a widening cystourethrogram. This is a very, very important investigation. This is only done for most two important diseases. This is the investigation of choice. Again, multiple times asked question. Okay. So, for what are the two diseases? One is there. One is there. What is that? Very good. That is for your posterior urethral valves posterior urethral valves okay it is a congenital condition most common in male children okay this is the one of the leading cause for urinary retention immediately after the birth okay so here vesico ureteric reflex what is vesico vesico means bladder okay so what happens is that whenever person is urinating uh, so consider this is the bladder okay so what will happen is that whenever person is urinating, bladder will contract, urine is supposed to go down. This is the rule you need to remember. Urine is formed in the kidney, should go to ureter, then to the bladder, then out of the bladder through the urethra. That is the only direction. If at all, because of any reason, if the urine is going back into your ureter, then we call it as a vesicoureteric reflex. This will lead to, this will lead to a disease. Okay, come on, anybody? Can you tell me what is the disease? 
it will lead to a disease called as very good pyelonephritis what is that pyelonephritis okay so again remember any patient uh, any patient who is having a vesicouretric reflex has a high risk of developing what is that pyelonephritis okay so then we have posterior urethral wall i told you people all of these are a mc right let's continue now <clears throat> Now, congenital anomalies. So, in the urinary system, congenital anomalies, let's discuss quickly. So, we have a disease called as a absence of kidney. Absence of kidney means a kidney is not formed. That is usually occurs because of renal agenesis. Now, most of the people will have one problem to understand, like to get confused also. See, if the kidney is there, but if it is in wrong location, then we call it as an ectopic kidney. If it is in a wrong location called as ectopic kidney, if kidney itself is not there, renal agenesis. Okay. So, if there is a renal agenesis, usually, usually earliest symptom during the pregnancy itself, usually the mother will have oligohydroamnios. Oligohydroamnios. Okay. Oligohydroamnios. Okay. Now, now. Now, ectopic kidney means it usually wherever, wherever the kidney is supposed to be located, apart from that, if it is somewhere else, usually kidneys are retroperitoneal, right? Now, please listen to me. Ectopic kidney means they are in a wrong location. So, wrong location occurs due to what a condition called as horseshoe kidney. Horseshoe kidney, see what happens is that if two kidneys are like this, right? Normally, two kidneys are sitting like this. Instead of two kidneys being like this in a horseshoe kidney, they are laterally located rather than that. They will come to the center, they will come to the center and the lower pole, this is a very important point to be remembered. What is that? The lower poles of the kidney will get fused, lower poles will get fused. We call it as, what is that? A horseshoe kidney, okay? So, here the most important point to be remembered, mandatory, never ever cut this part, never do not cut, do not cut, do not cut. So, do not cut. That is a very, very important point. So, there is no surgical resection of this part. Okay. This is the most important. So, usually ectopic kidneys are found at L3, L4 level. Most of the time, the child will have a normal, normal life, no problem. But what happens is that urine is not draining properly. There is a complication, urinary tract infection and stones. Okay. So, what are the MCQs from here? Horseshoe kidney. Point number one. Point number one is that never cut the lower poles where it is fused. Point number one. Most common complication is UTI. Usually asymptomatic, but symptom come also UTI only. So, what you are going to do? You are going to do the investigation of choice is CECT. Investigation of choice for this condition is CECT. This is also important MCQ. And antibiotics and stone removal should be done, but never ever cut the lower part where it is fused. This is an important point to be remembered. So, this is one of the most important congenital anomalies. In the congenital anomalies, what are the points to be remembered? I will tell you quickly once again. Remember, point number one, never cut the lower pole. CECT is investigation of choice. Most common complication is UTI. That's it. So, treat the complications. Uh, do not do any surgical intervention. This is very, very, very important point. Okay. So, if at all you do a intravenous pyelography, again, this is like examiner's favorite question. Every single time they, they will ask this. Okay. What is this? Uh, so, normal IVP. Normally, I will inject a contrast into the vein. From the vein, contrast will spread all over the body. Then it will go to the kidneys. From the kidney, contrast will get filtered and it will get collected in the renal pelvis like this, if you can notice, okay, like this, hmm? in the renal pelvis. And you, it will create an image. Clearly, you can see bladder, ureters, okay. So, for example, if contrast is not coming to the bladder, means what? Very good. Means there is an obstruction. Means there is an obstruction. If there is an obstruction on the both the side, automatically contrast will not come into the bladder. So, this is the way to understand. Now, if I do that only, in the CECT, it can be clearly evidently seen here. If you look here, the lower poles have been fused. The lower poles have been Fused. You can notice on this one very clearly. Lower poles have been fused. Okay. So, lower poles, if they are fused, uh, it will create an appearance called as flower wash sign or also called as a hand joining sign. Hand join sign or flower wash sign. Hand joining sign or flower wash sign is very, very important one. This has been asked so many times. So many times. Please remember, flower wash sign is seen with the uh, mm, horseshoe kidney. It is a congenital condition. Very important point, kids.
so this is like uh, i can tell every year if at all for example be it neat aims anything occurs right among which at least at least half of the exams will have this question at least once repeated okay so please remember it is important point from radiology as well as from your from your surgery okay let's go to the next uh, polycystic kidney disease polycystic kidney disease the word itself is very clear multiple cysts okay now it is a congenital condition or infantile condition so there are two types one is called as congenital one is called as infantile there are two types of polycystic so congenital is a autosomal dominant disease okay now infantile is a autosomal recessive disease now here it is 16th chromosome here it is 6th chromosome again this has been asked which chromosome so i will tell you a technique to remember okay so please understand see what happens is that congenital congenital is a type of adult polycystic kidney it is a type of adult pck now adults are bigger than the children adults are bigger than the children so adults are dominant so that is why you can remember the technique as autosomal dominant so congenital will be autosomal dominant okay now here infantile will be what recessive so autosomal recessive now again here so who is the it is a adult adult is elder than the children so automatically you can remember the number 16th chromosome infantile is only 6th chromosome defect so this is a very important point to be remembered now now congenital is an adult disease so adult disease means it will manifest immediately after birth or very late remember usually it will manifest after 30 years of age okay but we have seen some cases who is around 27 28 itself they can start to present now what, what is the rule so if they give you one what is that one cyst in a kidney that is not a polycystic so it is usually not usually mostly it is bilateral means both kidneys are involved okay along with that there can be cyst can be associated in other organs like liver pancreas spleen ovary okay then mitral valve prolapse can be there and berry aneurysm can be associated again this is a very important condition okay let's continue what happens here very simple polycyst multiple cysts are there so if multiple cysts if they are there automatically rule is very simple what will happen cyst is a fluid filled a sac filled with a clear fluid so what will happen multiple cysts in the kidney so kidneys will become enlarged so most commonly what will be there swelling in the abdomen as well as pain and they can also associated with hematuria you might ask sir why hematuria because as this to grows bigger and bigger it might affect a capillary level circulation okay so anything which causes hematuria usually anything which causes hematuria by affecting the capillaries that will usually activate ras system leading to hypertension now kidney function is lost uremia will be there sir how to remember pain swelling hematuria okay and it is bilateral suspected of very good suspected of which disease very nice polycystic kidney disease so polycystic kidney disease the investigation of choice is what always remember i was is cct investigation of choice is cct but uh, examiner is not interested there here there is an appearance this is also a very important appearance so if you look in the kidney because of the multiple cysts if you notice here in the kidney it looks like a leg of a spider okay so this is a, you can ask me sir very weird comparison well that is what the comparison has been done and kept so let's go with that only ivp spider leg appearance uh, ivp hand joining sign a uh, horseshoe kidney uh, spider like appearance very good polycystic kidney disease treatment the best treatment is renal transplant but we can try deroofing of the cyst but again cyst will come back again and again so best treatment will be always renal transplant okay so this is a story of your what is that very good story of your polycystic kidney disease now now in the upper urinary tract let's talk about some important again this is also again multiple times mcq has been asked see i am talking only such type of points which are mcq oriented we are doing around complete surgery important points recall within about 4 to 5 hours means you should understand what we are trying to do here okay now look here so what happens is that there is a upper urinary tract here only you can see this part you, you will notice the image in the image what is there so there are how many renal pelvis one renal pelvis here second renal pelvis here so what has happened is that 
duplication of renal pelvis duplication of renal pelvis now from there here also it is continuing into one ureter here also it is continuing into one ureter so what is the rule to be remembered so usually most commonly duplication of renal pelvis can also occur along with ureter okay there is no rule that always duplication of ureter is there there is no rule that always duplication of ureter is there okay so it can be associated with duplication of ureter or may not be associated it might have only one ureter also so here i can tell you what happens is that renal kidney will be like this one renal pelvis will come from here another renal pelvis will come and at the end of the day they both can also join into forming into one ureter only that is also a possible thing that's what i'm trying to explain you people okay now here if you notice if at all there is a duplication of ureter what can happen is that the lower ureter follow the second one done 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 okay we are going like this like this like this ah where it did go very nice it went into the upper part upper ureter went into the lower part of the bladder this is also important point okay now now listen to me very carefully what happens uh, if you do a intravenous pyelography intravenous pyelography if you notice here as if the lily flower is drooping like this as if lily flower is drooping like this uh, here also you can notice and here also you can notice uh, a lily flower is drooping like this called as drooping lily sign again a very very highly important mcq so in the ivp three appearances we saw so far all three of them are very important drooping lily sign will be associated with renal pelvis duplication there is no mandatory rule that ureter is duplicated ureter can be duplicated may not be duplicated also okay all right so if there is a duplication of ureter if there is a duplication of ureter usually both ureters will join but rarely sometimes what can happen as i explained upper upper ureter will go below lower ureter will go above okay so please understand remember this much only for ectopic ureter we follow a rule called as mayer ray law okay so this is the same thing we call you follow a rule mayer ray law so this is also important question asked so what will the question be question is going to be like this uh, mayer ray law will be useful in which this is here use where is that ectopic ureter now what happens is that this ureter also very very stupid fellow so consider there is duplication all right so what happens one ureter was coming like this okay now the bladder was sitting like this very nicely now what can happen is that this ureter will go all the way into the ureter into the urethra and get implanted see is it normal location no it is absolutely a abnormal location means that ureter is ectopic implantation of ureter ectopic implantation of ureter also called as ectopic ureter now if there is a ectopic ureter see sphincter is here above now the ureter is coming below so you cannot stop the urine urine will continuously come out so it will create what is that hmm, dribbling incontinence that's it okay so most commonly anywhere if there is a defect with the urinary flow as uh, that is your urinary tract infection okay especially in the female what happens since the urethra is mass like you know the length of the urethra is smaller so female usually develops urinary incontinence uh, again investigation of choice is ivp why ivp sir because ivp clearly shows the anatomy wherever the ureter is going there and all contrast will go with that we can see the image okay so now what we are supposed to do here we need to do surgical intervention what we are supposed to do close this path take him tell him hey mental fellow where you have come go to your place so you set him into the right place called as reimplantation of ureter that's it so here also again points to be remembered dribbling incontinence in female male most commonly uti okay then treatment is reimplantation and here in the ectopic ureter we follow a rule mayer right law that's it okay now here we have next disease that is uh, that is urethrocele see i have put all the important mcqs in one place okay so that is the advantage of having this material here now urethrocele now urethrocele what happens urethrocele what happens is that a partial atresia of urethric orifice what do i mean by this simple 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 consider this is the bladder okay 
Now, in the bladder, bladder is a smooth muscle. Bladder is made out of a smooth muscle called as detrusor muscle. So, internally, we have innermost layer. We have an innermost layer, right? Mm -hmm. Then, we will have a next layer called as muscular layer. Muscular layer. Okay. All right. Then, the outer layer would be like this. Now, ureter used to ureter used to come, ureter used to come here and open like this into where into the bladder. Okay. But instead of that, what happens is that ureter will not have sufficient opening. Ureter will not have what is that sufficient opening. Okay. Ureter will not have sufficient opening. So because of that, ureter will start to dilate within the bladder like this. Ureter will start to dilate within the bladder like this means within the layers of the bladder ureter will get dilated we call it as a intramural here the word is very important where exactly is there intramural dilation because of what abs atresia all of you know because uh, now you should not be asking me the word meaning of atresia because you are very closer to exam atresia means absence of formation so if there is an absence of formation of this this opening is not formed properly ureter got dilated call it as a uretrocele uretrocele most commonly most commonly see it is usually affected in female and mostly it is bilateral both the sides are affected and most common complaint will be uti now investigation of choice so investigation of choice please remember we can do mixturing cystourethrogram okay but rather than cystourethrogram the best investigation see we can do it but the best investigation is ivp only in the ivp you will get a appearance like this that is only called as cobra head or cobra head are also called as adder head appearance again adder head appearance is a very important question okay now what we are supposed to do now we are supposed to do is what very simple take one endoscope take one endoscope go into the bladder okay cut this area make the opening sufficient once you make the opening sufficient urine will start to come into the bladder okay so what will be the treatment for that endoscopic incision of ureteric orifice or cystoscopy endoscopic or cystoscopic the words can be interchanged and asked again it has been asked multiple times endoscopic or cystoscopic cutting of the orifice so it's an incision of the orifice that will make the orifice bigger that is a story of your very good that is your uh, what is that ureterocele let's go to the next one which i have been telling most important the one what is that posterior urethral valves what is posterior urethral valves now if i tell you like this you will not understand very simple look here bladder right from there we have what is that urethra coming out now in this urethra what will be there there will be two valves sitting like this is it normal no it is absolutely not normal it is a congenital disease Two valves are sitting. Now, whenever bladder contracts for urination, now what will happen? It will contract. Now, valves are sitting like this. Bam, they will close. They will close. See, from the above, bladder is contracting. From above, bladder is contracting. Every time contracts, valve will close. Can urine come out? No. So, if urine cannot come out, so in wherever condition where there is a decreased urine, like urine coming out, automatically mother, like during the Pregnancy, there will be oligohydroamnios. All of you know that. Now, remember, so because of that, urine cannot come. So, for that purpose only, because of that only, there will be what is that? Immediately after the birth, urinary retention. So, remember, it is occurs only in male. Okay. And most common site, we have a point in the urethra. This is also asked very many times. So, there is something called as Veru Montanum in the prostatic urethra. Okay. So, what will have an obstruction will occur. So, there can be two types, complete or incomplete. Means, complete means what? Complete means valves will close completely like this, valves will close completely like this. If valve will close completely like this, uh, urinary retention immediately. If at all partial is there. If at all, for example, what will be there? Partial will be there. Now, what will happen? Partial means like this. Okay. So, valves are there, but they are not causing complete obstruction. If there is no complete obstruction, urine flow will be impaired leading to recurrent what is that urinary tract infection the investigation yes definitely we'll get you the pdf i'll get you the, the slides only for you people so that is the purpose of putting everything in one place na? okay rakas
So, what is the treatment? The treatment will be very easy. Transurethral resection of the valves. What is disturbing? Valves are disturbing. Go inside. Cut the valve. Cut the valves. Okay. Now, you are not going to do that harshly. Okay. I am just like explaining you people. So, investigation of choice is MCU. And treatment will be transurethral resection of the valves. Are also called as fulgration of the valves. Also called as fulgration of the valves. Fulgration of the valves. Okay. Now, in the micturating cystourethrogram, it would look something like this valves. So, let's go to the next important aspect that is congenital heart defects in the penis. So, congenital heart defects in the penis is what? So, there is a condition called as hypostadias. Okay. It's very, very easy to remember. First, Let's use these images. We have image number one, normal penis. What is happening? Urethra is coming from the bladder. It is going all the way into the, into the penis and opening at a distal part of the penis. Okay. That is only at the glans penis. All of us know. Now what will happen is that hypostadias. Hypostadias means, so this is the inferior surface of the penis. This is the inferior surface of the penis. This will be the superior surface. So, in the inferior surface, what will happen? Urethra will open. So, basically, below the penis, instead of in the glans penis, below the penis, what will happen? Urethra opens. Okay. Now, urethra where and all it can open? So, it can open in the glans penis itself or subcoronal or in the shaft, in the middle part of the penis. Or it can go into what is that uh, even penoscrotal junction or even scrotal. It can go up to the level of perineal. perineal. Now the problem is what? Very simple. The problem is, see, if urethra is opening in the penoscrotal junction, let's say. Now if I want to do the treatment, I have to reconstruct the urethra in this much extra length. Because somewhere in the penoscrotal junction is the urethra opening. Now, if I want to do the treatment, I have to reconstruct the urethra all this length. So, as the opening goes deeper and deeper, we can call. Or we can call as opening goes deeper and deeper. Or as if the opening goes towards the, pen, towards the penoscrotal junction, the severity of the disease is more. Okay, so among which, which is the most dangerous form of hypostadias, come on, tell me now, that will be your perineal. Okay, least dangerous form will be glandular. Okay, so posterior ones are the most dangerous, posterior opening ones are the most dangerous because it is very difficult to do that. So, because of which what will happen? Now, now look here. So, urethra is opening in the lower part because of that, penis will start to bend like this. Okay, so downward curvature of the penis is called as cordy. So here two problems, abnormal opening and also what is that? Very good. What is that? Cordy. Now the treatment will be very simple. Correct the cordy, downward curvature and also treatment, urethroplasty. Sir, where do you get the extra tissue from? Because for example, if it is opening somewhere here, so if you need to open it up, in this opening, if you need to do the surgical repairment, so we are supposed to make it something like this. Now, for this extra graft, where do you get it from? So, you get it from the profuse. That is only called as foreskin. Okay. So, because of this profuse is required, if a child is diagnosed with hypostadia, tell them, tell for any purposes, do not go for a circumcision because that, that tissue will be used for reconstruction of the urethra. Okay, so after surgery, see now what we have done, I'll tell you what we have done is very simple. Now there was one wrong pathway, we know that. Okay, we corrected this pathway and we had closed it here. Now later after surgery, again this fistula can come back. Again this opening can come back. So that is only called as urethrocutaneous fistula. Okay, sir in this what is the most important? Circumcision is contraindicated. And treatment cardiac correction and urethroplasty. That's all. Let's go to the next one. Undescended testes. Undescended testes. Well, not many questions were noticed in last few years. But uh, since the questions are not there, they might ask you. Very simple. So, what happens is that testicles are formed in the abdomen. 
okay and as uh, as development occurs from the abdomen they will go into the scrotum through the inguinal canal remember through the inguinal canal they will go down and they will get settled where in the scrotum okay so for example if testis is not descended means they are stuck in the abdomen only okay if not descended they are stuck in the abdomen only now what will happen scrotum is there but scrotum has no testicle empty so testicles are hidden somewhere in the abdomen somewhere in the abdomen called as cryptarchidism cryptarchidism crypto means hidden all of you know that so what will happen because of which ectopic testis will arise okay now what happens is that they are in the wrong location because of that because of that there can be complications such as atrophy because the location for the testicles was scrotum instead of scrotum they are stuck somewhere in the inguinal canal or maybe some other place so now what will happen testicle does not have a place for its development atrophy can occur easily trauma can occur because of normal physical exercise also if testicles are stuck in the inguinal canal because of that trauma can occur epididymo arcitis and remember sterility if bilateral is there if both the testicles are not there sterility can occur torsion testicular torsion is easy inguinal hernia and semiloma okay all these are all these are very 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 important ones okay so remember remember these are the complications okay this has been asked but again most importantly clinical examination first yeah clinically examine uh, do the scrotal examination then you can go for usg but the best one is diagnostic laparoscopy because we can go into the abdomen and we can search and find out where they are sitting and the treatment is what archaeopex bring them back into their original location that is only for archaeopex okay so let's go to the next point that is trauma again trauma questions has been asked within last 2 to 3 years means there is a high possibility it will recur now in that trauma trauma to the urinary tract bladder can rupture okay so there can be rupture of urethra so bladder rupture bladder rupture also again interesting thing normally bladder is a extra peritoneal organ if at all if at all bladder is full bladder is full then bladder becomes a intra peritoneal bladder all of us now what can happen is that for example a person is drinking beer a person is drinking if a person is drinking beer so he had drank a lot of beer so automatically urine output is more so a lot of urine is filled in the bladder now full bladder bladder is filled now the bladder is intra peritoneal gone into the peritoneal okay now at this time there was a trauma to the abdomen easily it can rupture and the rupture will occur where intra peritoneal so if full bladder is ruptured intra peritoneal if empty bladder is ruptured extra peritoneal that's it okay so there is intra peritoneal and extra peritoneal intra peritoneal usually trauma followed by beer drinking if you get this question trauma followed by beer drinking first question to be ruled out is trauma to the urinary tract especially bladder extra peritoneal usually for example a person was driving a car in a high velocity he met with a accident okay now what can happen is that there was a dislocation of the hip dislocation of the hip so femur has gone dislocated and gone into the pelvis so that time pelvis fractures will occur so pelvis fracture can easily easily lead to bladder rupture so we are going to get something called as tear drop bladder sign can be associated so intra peritoneal rupture so bladder is full that time or lower abdominal surgeries okay now most importantly suddenly patient where is the bladder located hypogastrium in the hypogastrium pain will be there along with that a typical characteristic sign syncope with the syncope if there is a hypogastric pain think of bladder rupture okay now sir what is a bedside test take one needle try to tap the peritoneum if you tap the peritoneum if you get urine from the peritoneum normally peritoneum does not have urine but because of bladder rupture that is filled with the urine if it is filled with the urine if you tap a peritoneal cavity if you get urine that means bladder has ruptured so that is on the bedside test peritoneal tap the best investigation is cystogram so in the cystogram here you notice this is also a very important mcq based image so please focus here what is that so into the bladder i will send the contrast now contrast will start to see if bladder was intact like this na the bladder is intact like this that is a different case scenario it is with the ureters 
everything was fine. So if bladder was intact, contrast would have sat only and only where in the bladder. But instead of that, if contrast is spilling into the peritoneum, like how you can see in this image like this, okay. So that is suggestive of rupture. So investigation of choice is cystogram. Now treatment will be laparotomy, open the lap peritoneum, sorry, open the abdomen, go into the abdomen. So open laparotomy, then what is that? Normally for us to remember, what is that? Jadu pocha. What is that? Jadu pocha means lavage. What we are going to do? We are going to clean up the peritoneum and bladder repair. Bladder repair. Now for bladder repair also, we can use a patch called as Graham's patch. There is a technique. So urethra rupture, urethra see, whole urethra can be anterior part of the urethra, posterior part of the urethra. How do I understand? So remember, from the bladder, urethra was coming like this, right? It was going all the way like this, okay? So this part of the urethra, you can call it as what? Posterior part, here also your bladder, okay? So this part of the urethra, we'll call it as a posterior part. This part of the urethra, we'll call it as anterior. Okay, so anterior urethral rupture or posterior rupture can happen. If there is an anterior rupture, what can happen? It can involve, see, remember, perineal or bulbar part will be involved. So this will be perineal or bulbar part. So that is penile urethra also can be involved. Okay, now clinical feature. Clinical feature will be retention of urine. Urine cannot come out properly. And most characteristic sign, perineal hematoma. Perineal hematoma. And when you look at the examination, now if there is a rupture, let's consider there is a rupture. Okay. If there is a rupture of the urethra. Okay. Somewhere here. Now what will happen is that, so there will be rupture is there. In all this area, in all this area, there will be swelling occurring. But along with that, small drops of blood can come out in the penis from the in the urine. Okay, so the most important one is so blood at the tip of the external urethral meatus or blood at the tip of the penis is a characteristic sign of urethral rupture. Now, please listen to me. Please listen to me. So, posterior, this part of the urethra, it is usually due to pelvis fracture again. Okay, so especially what is that near the apex of the prostate. So, in that in digital rectal examination, high lying prostate can be there. Now, the most important point you need to understand here is very, very, very commonly asked question again. So, what is the investigation of choice? Retrograde urethrogram, of course. But the question is, what is the treatment? Treatment for the bladder rupture is different compared to that of treatment from the urethral rupture. So, please understand in the bladder rupture and there is one important, important difference here. Okay, what is that? If there is, my dear student, if there is a bladder rupture is there, if there is a bladder rupture is there, first thing you are supposed to do is catheter. What you are supposed to do? Foley's catheter. Okay. Why catheter? Very simple. We need to keep the bladder empty because, see, if more urine goes into the peritoneum, it will contaminate a lot. So, to avoid that, put a Foley's catheter. So, first step of management always with a, for the bladder rupture is very good. Place a catheter. But here you cannot pass a catheter because you might damage more. So for that purpose, we are going to go for a suprapubic cystostomy. So this is also a very important point for the bladder rupture catheter. For urethral rupture, no need. Finished? All right. Then let's go to the urolithiasis. See, urolithiasis, usually we study a lot, but uh, not as much as uh, you think of uh, like question, but easy to understand also. Urolithiasis throughout the urinary tract, if there is a stones, we call it as a urolithiasis. So there are risk factor. What is the risk factor? This risk factor is what this especially citrate and oxalate is a very, very favorite question for examiner. What he will do is that remember normal urine pH, normal urine pH is acidic in nature. It is an acidic in nature. Okay. Around 4 to 4.5 approximately. Now, if at all this pH is changed pH is changed. So, pH is changed. So, to what? Alkaline pH. Any condition where there is an alkaline pH, be it due to urinary tract infection, be it due to, for example, other metabolic diseases, be it due to anything, if the urine becomes alkaline, yes, enjoy the stones because there is a high risk of stones. So, in this, 
there is an increase of oxalate and decrease of citrate. Citrates are usually acidic in nature. So that is altered urinary solutes and altered urinary pH. Both of them, okay. Inadequate drainage. What I told, horseshoe kidney are anywhere. If urine is not going properly, urine, see, urine will consist of some amount of calcium, okay. Urine salts will be there. Now that's urine salts will deposit and cause the stone. Urinary tract infection, again, most, most commonly proteus, especially proteus infection increases the risk of stones. Then hyperparathyroidism and hyperurisoyuria, vitamin A deficiency and there is one plague called as Randall plague. What is this Randall plague? It's a superficial mucosal erosion of your, what is that? Of the urinary tract, okay? So there are multiple types of stones are there based on what it is made out of. So most common type is, the most common type is the calcium oxalate stone. Calcium oxalate. So calcium oxalate will have two types. Calcium oxalate monohydrate and dihydrate. Now, I don't think so. They'll you, Most common questions are not asked anymore. So, dihydrate is most common, but uh, don't uh, go into that much of remembering. But this one is very, very important. What is that? Triple phosphate. Okay. So, triple phosphate stone, triple phosphate stone, there are multiple uh, phosphate, uh, like, you know, will start to accumulate. Okay. And in boom, usually associated with alkaline urine and urinary tract infection. But the most important characteristic question is this one. Stag horn stone. Now by looking at this, don't think it is a piece of ginger. It is not a piece of ginger. What is this? Urinary stone. Okay. Now this urinary stone, if you notice, consider this is the kidney, right? In the kidney, okay, here we have renal pelvis like this, sir. So, renal pelvis is like this, okay. So, exactly if it stone becomes exactly shape of the renal pelvis. Stone will becomes what is that? Shape of the renal pelvis. So, that type of stones only we call it as a stag horn stone. This is also a very important stag horn stone. So, directly they can give you a picture what type of stone it is which was obtained from the patient. After surgery, we got this stone. What type of stone it is? It is a stag horn stone. The hardest stones are cysteine stones and the smoothest stones are uric acid stones. These smoothest stones cannot be seen usually on your x-ray. Okay. Then we have xanthine stone, lysine, indinavir, okay, allopurinol, triamterine. Now, especially triamterine stones is a side effect of potassium sparing diuretic. You can remember that. Okay. Now, based on the location, based on the location, the characteristic pain will be changed. Now, what exactly I am trying to tell you is that consider this is one urinary tract. Consider ureter, ureter only. In the ureter, there is one stone like this. Okay. It is causing the obstruction. So, now what can happen is that smooth muscles, like you know, the ureter will have smooth muscle. Now, the smooth muscle will contract. Whenever smooth muscle contract, because of this contraction and stone getting stuck inside, it will create a pain. Okay. So, spasm of the smooth muscle creating a pain, we call it as a colic. That is only called as your renal colic. Okay. So, most commonly pain. So, pain. Okay. And remember, Increased frequency of urination. This also question asked earliest sign. Okay. Now what can happen is that if at all, for example, imagine there is a stone in where? In the bladder. Okay. Stone in the bladder. If there is a stone in the bladder, whenever patient try to urinate, the flow of the urine can be interrupted. Okay. That is in the bladder stone. Now, pain differs by the location. If there is a kidney stone, fixed lumbar pain. Okay. Upper one third, it will radiate to the perineum. Middle one third of the ureter, then it will radiate to the inner thigh. Okay. Lower ureteric stone, that is only that will create a strangling. Okay. Then bladder stone, there will be suprapubic pain. Among which remember, you will remember very easily fixed lumbar pain. Bladder also suprapubic pain, you will remember. Now, if at all, if at all, lumbar pain, if at all, lumbar pain, if it is radiating, consider that it is a ureteric stone. That is sufficient for you. Okay. Now, so bladder neck also suprapubic pain, but remember bladder neck stone can radiate to the tip of the penis. So what will be the most important treatment? First, the patient will come to you with a severe pain. Okay. Severe pain. If the patient comes to you with a severe pain, first what you are going to do is that relieve the pain. 
by using anticholinergic drugs which will decrease the smooth muscle tone that is one way or you can also consider rotavirin in the smooth muscle relaxation followed by that followed by that then you can go for a x-ray or UST, but usually preferred is UST. but again best investigation to prove is always remember nccp this is a very important question asked multiple times okay why because the two most important direct indications for nccp is head injury and this one what is that urinary stones treatment will be we can go for eswl okay extracorporal shockwave litho lithotomy then we can go for pcnl if the stone is what is that more than two centimeter okay then you can go for urs for the lower ureteric stones and lithoplaxy for the bladder stone okay among which sir what to remember if it is less than two centimeter okay esw if more than two centimeter pcnl percutaneous nephrolithotomy okay that is point number one point number two wherever if ESW, extracorporal shock wave lithotripsy, shock wave lithotripsy, if contraindicated, in which condition? Bleeding, bleeding tendency, coagulopathies, and if there is a possibility of, what is that? Very good. If there is a possibility of, hmm, what is that? The stone, if it is very strong stone, hard stone, such as cysteine stone, okay, and if the female is pregnant. During this condition, we don't prefer what is that ESWL. So, wherever you can't do ESWL, the best treatment is percutaneous nephrolithotomy. That is the story of the bladder stone. Now, in the urinary TB, urinary TB, there are only few of the very, very important questions. Point number one, urinary TB is a type of secondary TB. Urinary TB is a secondary TB. Okay. So, primary, primary usually is lung only. Okay. So, what happens is that TB bacteria will come. Now, all of us know that TB bacteria infection usually progression is very slow. Okay. Now, what can happen is that there will be first and most important change called as pyonephrosis followed by that parenchymal microabscesses. Okay. Because of the infection. Now, so the infection is going on and on for a long period of time. Because of that, because of that, body will do what? Chronic inflammation, body will start to heal itself. So, if at all healing comes into the into the care, into the action, that means we already know that there will be connective tissue formation. So, putty kidney, the kidney will get hard, very hard. Okay. Now, kidney function is deteriorated. Now, followed by the fibrosis, calcium deposition will occur. Cement kidney will be there. followed by that. Cement kidney will be there and renal function is lost called as autonephrectomy so this is only your putty kidney are also called as cement kidney okay very important one very very important one this is mostly asked question so if there is a kidney tb always remember putty kidney can be consequence okay now remember one more aspect here also in the ct you can see very white color almost equal to that of your bone so that is clearly telling you what is that uh, there is a calcium deposition and kidney function is lost that is only your renal tb now now remember what can happen if there is a ureteric tb it is usually rare usually rare but if it occurs in the ureter Usually what will happen? Ureter will become strictured. What do I mean by this? Ureters will become like this. Consider one ureter was like this. Normal ureter. This was a normal one. After followed by the TB, what can happen is that like this. Normal ureter which will have a strictures. Which will have a strictures. Okay. So, again if there is a TB anywhere, what is the treatment of choice? Yes, we are going to go for a anti-TB treatment. But bladder TB. Now, bladder TB is little different. Again, remember bladder TB, first and most important aspect we need to understand is that bladder. So, bladder actually what we think is that bladder is sitting like this, ureters are coming and opening here. That is what we think usually. No, not that is not the scenario. All of us must know this. What will happen is that ureter will come like this. It will go back side. Consider this is a bladder, right? So, ureter is coming like this. It won't go directly into the bladder. Rather, it will go behind the bladder like this. Then it will open. So, it will go behind like this. Okay. And opening here. Again, one more ureter will also come like this. Go behind and open. Now, there is one opening, another opening and ureteric opening. This is only called as trigone of the bladder. 
in this trigone of the bladder the first change you can notice is here where exactly near the opening near the opening so this opening will become very narrow okay so that is only narrow and also initially changes changes what you are going to get is what is that ureteric arc first change okay so that appearance usually looks like what is that that in the ivp it will look like a golf ball in the ivp it will look like a golf ball later what will happen whole bladder will get infected then fibrosis narrow contracted bladder what is that narrow contracted bladder we call it as a thimble bladder okay so again anywhere in the urinary tb the only most first and earliest symptom is increased frequency of urination then hematuria and the symptoms of tb such as evening fever weight loss loss of appetite so that constitutional symptoms okay if you do a sir you can we do a urine test yes in the urine test we will not find the bacteria okay but actually what we are going to get is sterile acidic and pyuria sterile acidic pyuria means in this the bacteria will not be there only pus cells can be there okay that is why we call it as a sterile one okay investigation of choice is cct now bladder has gone it may also gone in the re renal tb so what is the treatment the only treatment will be what is that yes anti tb treatment anti tb treatment okay now what exactly we need to understand then along with that we can do a neo bladder construction neo bladder construction are also called as new bladder reconstruction we can do what new bladder reconstruction we can do okay so first what we are going to do we will remove this thimble bladder then we can reconstruct the new bladder so here we will have what is that most importantly you can see this is your putty kidney okay so first treatment is anti tb treatment if there is a stenosis pyeloplasty so this is also important question what is that puj stenosis puj stenosis is one of the common recently conditions which are like you know more frequently diagnosed so what happens is that pelvis and urethra that junction will become narrowed that is usually congenital condition or it can be associated followed by the tb so we are going to do a pyeloplasty the name of the surgery is anderson hens operation if there is a ureteric stricture urethroplasty all of us know but most important one remember what is the treatment for thimble bladder thimble bladder first remove that narrow contracted bladder then we are going to create a neo bladder for that we will take ileum okay so we can create a new bladder if that is not there we can do one more thing take both the see i'm not able to create the bladder if i'm not able to create the bladder take the both ureters put it into sigma colon so along with stool yes exactly along with stool what will happen will the urine will also go that's it okay so then we'll go to the next one prostate so now please listen to me when we are talking about prostate so in the prostate please listen to me most importantly pathophysiology patholo pathophysiology of fever what is that benign prostatic hyperplasia so what happens is most important we need to understand here so look we have a testosterone testosterone this testosterone under the influence of an enzyme 5 alpha reductase all of you know so it will create what is that 1 comma 5 dihydroxy testosterone this 1 comma 5 dihydroxy testosterone will go and cause the growth of the prostate cause the growth of the prostate if there is a growth of the prostate automatically what will be there my dear students of course there is a enlargement so remember because of this mechanism only the best treatment will be what is that 5 alpha reductase inhibitors is the drug of choice for bph but symptoms are different now prostate is getting enlarged because of that what will happen all of us know when they so if consider this was a prostate gland consider if this was a prostate gland in the prostate what was going very good ureter was ureter going or urethra very good urethra was going like this now prostate get enlarged what will happen is that urethra will become what is that narrowed and elongated okay then then most most of the urine will start to remain in the bladder only because urine cannot come out urine will remain where in the bladder if it remains in the bladder what will happen bladder valve become sagging okay okay now there can be lots what is that lower urinary tract symptoms okay so it can be due to two things excessive urine storage or difficulty to urinate 
Okay. Now, what is that large lower urinary tract symptoms? That includes, remember, the patient will have difficulty in urination. Okay. Flow is impaired. Flow is impaired. Okay. So, then what will happen? Patient will start to urinate but cannot empty the whole bladder. These are all voiding related and also patient can have strangling. Okay. Then storage related. So, storage related problems can also be there. Now, clinical approach, first and most important, if you suspect a prostate enlargement, first thing, DRE, that is digital rectal examination. For always remember, for a digital rectal examination, you are never going to use two fingers, you are supposed to use one finger. Okay. Good evening. Okay. That is very important point to be remembered. Uh, again, digital means you are not going to do, do some extraordinary equipment, nothing, you are using your fingers. Okay. Now, what exactly investigation of choice is? What is that? USG KUBP. Kidney. Very good. Kidney, urethra, bladder and prostate. Now, what exactly the ultrasound will tell? Ultrasound will tell the volume of the prostate. Means how, what is the size of the prostate also it will tell. And also one more thing it will tell. What is that? PVR, post void residue. What do I mean by this? See, after urination, whatever urine remaining in the bladder, we call it as a post void residue. So, post void residue, if it is more than 100 ml, then think of BPH. Then think of BPH or suspect of enlargement of the prostate. Okay. Then we have prostate specific antigen. So, prostate specific antigen, remember the normal level is 0 to 4. If more than 10 is there suspected of cancer, if more than 35 is there advanced cancer. This is also one method we can use. Usually 4 to 10 means we can think of BPH. Then we can go for urodynamic studies that is systometry and uroflometry. That is also again not widely used but yes they are used but with the ultrasound only we will get all of the details. Treatment. Treatment, if mild or no complication, then what we are going to do? Medical management. In the medical management, 5-alpha reductase inhibitors we are going to use the drug such as finasteride. The drug such as finasteride. And for the symptoms, for the symptoms, okay, for the symptoms, difficulty in urination and all these things, we are going to use uh, um, that treatment. What is that? That drug is tamsulosin. We are going to use what is that? Tamsulosin. Or we can also use psilidocin. Okay, these are the two docins. Okay, tamsulosin and psilidocin. These two drugs can be used. They are characteristically alpha 1A blockers. Alpha 1A blockers. Again, if there is a very mild or if there is no complications. Surgery, if the symptoms are severe, means he is not able to urinate at all properly, then we are going to go for a surgery. Or maybe there are some urinary obstruction. Your prostate has become so much that it has closed the blood, like closed the urethra. So that time also you are going to go for a surgery. Okay. So surgery complications such as urinary tract infection. So urethrohydronephrosis, these kind of things. Okay. Now what is the two surgical method, uh, like two types of treatment we have? One is called as TAT. That's urethral resection of prostate. Or we can also use one laser. Holmium laser. Okay. Now, when we are doing any transurethral resection procedures, transurethral procedure, a lot and lot of fluid will be used for irrigation, such as normal saline. Continuously, normal saline might be required for irrigation during the surgery. Now, this normal saline will get absorbed, absorbed. The volume will become so much, the patient can end up into congestive heart failure. So, that type of complication only called as TUR syndrome. So, to avoid that, what is the fluid of choice is glycerin. Remember, not NS, 1.5 glycerin is used to avoid the TAR syndrome. Okay. So, when there is a TAR, after sir, TAR syndrome, the patient can have, what is that? Congestive cardiac failure due to volume overload. There can be retrograde ejaculation. Again, that can occur as a result of tamsulosin also. Then, difficult, uh, urinary incontinence, strictures can occur and major complication of any surgery will be hemorrhage. Okay, so this is a part of your what is that benign prosthetic hyperplasia. So, what are not to be remembered? So, in this one, lower urinary tract symptom, 5 alpha reductase, and the same same 5 alpha reductase enzyme will play in 
that is 1 comma 5 dth synthesis that 1 comma 5 dth only causes androgenic alopecia also there also we can consider these terms okay so this is a story of your prostate gland and all important other aspects also okay then followed by that we will discuss some other diseases after a short break okay so let's take a break of around 10 10 to 15 let's take a break of 15 minutes okay let's take a break of 15 minutes then we'll continue
All right. Welcome back, everybody. Let me check if I'm audible or not. Okay, perfect. Mm -hmm. So, we discussed about the prostate gland. Let's continue to the next discussion. So, what exactly we are trying to do? That is, uh, that is your penis. Okay, again, based on the questions, based on the penis are asked very repeatedly. Okay. So, please be well prepared. Now, most of the people think, what is that? Sir, what type of organ it is? It is a spongy organ. It is made out of something called as corporal tissue. Most important point to be remembered is corporal tissue. A corporal tissue hota ke, what exactly it is. So corporal tissue is such type of tissue in which what happens here is that it is a spongy tissue in which blood can get filled. In which what can get filled? Blood can get filled. Okay. So if you take a section of the penis, like you know, if we take a section like this and look at the penis, what we are going to see, okay? One structure we are going to get is urethra and we have corporal tissue, okay? Then followed by that, we have your, between these two corporal tissue, we have a septum and if you go above and see, this is the most important thing to be remembered. What is that? This is the most important dorsal deep vein or deep dorsal vein deep dorsal vein so why this becomes important you'll understand in a minute so this plays a lot of important role in the erection as well as during understanding of diseases like what is that that is during sickle cell anemia or maybe other conditions also where the person will have a painful erection okay we'll talk about that so, in the penis we have, what is this? See, this is an important aspect. We have glans penis. Above the glans penis, whatever skin is there, we call it as a prepuce or also called as a simplified term for a pore skin. Okay. Now, let's jump into the most important and in interesting physiology for you people. What is that? Erection. Okay. So, look here. Erection. Erection and ejaculation. Erection is under the influence of parasympathetic nervous system. Remember this point parasympathetic nervous system erection is under the influence of parasympathetic nervous system ejaculation is hello 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 ejaculation is under the influence of what is that very good that is under the influence of sympathetic nervous system now sexual stimulation multiple things imagination touch whatever the stimulation followed by the stimulation one of the most important release of a neurotransmitter called as NO okay release of it <laughs> called as NO now, my dear students, this NGO, whatever is there, this NGO will promote the formation of CGMP in a smooth muscle. Very simple. Whenever NGO acts on the smooth muscle, inside the cell, there is a secondary messenger. This also MCQ, which has been asked. So, there will be release of CGMP. NGO secondary messenger is CGMP. Now, this CGMP is produced. Whatever CGMP is produced, that will increase the blood flow to the penis, causing the erection. So, very simple as that. If erection has to occur, what, what is the important aspect very good that is your cgmp should be formed cgmp cgmp is metabolized by an enzyme phosphodiesterase enzyme so this phosphodiesterase enzyme inhibitors will increase the quantity of cgmp leading to erection this pd inhibitor only was sealed in up okay so let's understand the first and most important disease what is that phimosis now please understand if you consider this is a penis okay and here the glans penis here the glans penis right above that there is a skin above that there is a skin like this right skin fold is like this, okay so we call the skin fold as a prepuce now this prepuce is a movable part of the skin so prepuce can be retracted or it can be brought back onto the glans penis okay now, if at all you are unable to retract, a patient came to you with the complaints of inability to retract, he is not able to retract the prepuce. We call it as a phimosis. We call it as a phimosis. Inability to retract the, what is that? Retract from the glands. So, it could be physiological up to three years, but followed by three years, if it is there, then we will call it as a pathological. Okay. So, the, here there are multiple causes that is not important. The treatment for you people will be circumcision. What is the treatment? Circumcision. Okay. So, circumcision. Circumcision is the treatment. 
okay so what we are going to do we are going to remove the pore skin that is only your that is only your profuse okay for example parafimosis parafimosis what happens see from the pin from the glans penis skin will come back but we are not able to bring it back onto the glans penis means if we are unable to retract the profuse profuse is skin skin if you can't get it back onto the penis that is glans penis we call it as a parafimosis okay simple is kaise yaad rakhna hai skin agar piche nahi jayega okay so we'll call it as a phimosis agar piche jane ke baad wapas nahi aayega call it as a parafimosis okay so parafimosis if it occurs the first thing you should do is that manual reduction first you just try to bring it by hand if that is not going to help you then we are going to go for a operation called as dorsal split operation here you can see this procedure described or if not there we can also go for a circumcision okay so these are the two methods of treatment we have for the parafimosis now penile fracture many people think sir does penis get fractured yes okay let's burst the myth again and again during neurology i keep telling is penis can get fractured but when only during the erect penis okay so during the erect penis what happens is that person is like you know <laughs> under a vigorous sexual activity so during this time okay very good during this time what can happen is that there is a tunica is there na tunica can get ruptured rupture of the tunica okay will will create what is a penile fracture okay so over enthusiastic sex can lead to penile fracture okay so sir penile fracture what are the clinical feature these are the clinical feature during the over enthusiastic sex okay sudden suddenly loss of erection sudden loss of erection point number 1 erection and point number 2 so this fracture even most of the time it will create a clicking sound clicking sound so during the sexual activity there was a clicking sound tuck okay followed by that sudden loss of erection then it is a suggestive of penile fracture okay so what is the treatment we are going to do it is a soft tissue the best investigation is mri but we can consider usg also okay what we are going to do it is uh, tunica is ruptured repair the tunica that's it okay so this is also a important point to be remembered so what and all penile fracture if they give you a clinical case a person came to the hospital with the complaints of sudden loss of erection during the sexual activity that was that was after a clicking sound then it is a rupture of tunica penile fracture repair is the treatment then the next one called as pyrenees disease what is this pyrenees disease first and most important to understand here if you notice this is a normal penile tissue okay so in this normal penile tissue what can happen is that there will be fibrous plaque fibrous tissue means very hard which is cannot be bent which is not having a elastic property means it is not like you know smooth muscle it cannot be stretched for example penis was straight like this okay now what will be there there is a fibrous plaque here there is a fibrous plaque so because of this fibrous plaque penis what can happen so penis will start to become curvature to the one side only so because of the fibrous plaque so either downward curvature or upward curvature so what exactly i am trying to tell you is that if you consider this is a penis of a patient okay if you consider this is a penis of a patient if at all plaque is on the upper side automatically the bend of the penis will be to the upward direction if it is in the lower part then it will be towards the low if lower curvature is there we call it as a cordy okay now what exactly is that so what is that hard fibrous plaque okay because of that what can what can happen curvature of the penis so what exactly can cause the trauma to the penis or there is one more condition called as dupuytren's contracture these two can lead to what is a pyrenees disease now usually it will go off on its own on own in 3 to 5 years if not they tell the patient do not worry about it it is not going to affect your sexual health or any other ways so reassure then we can go for a operation called as nesbits operation this is a important point to be remembered nesbits procedure is done for which this is pyrenees disease okay or we can go for plastic reconstruction so you can just remove this plaque alone by giving a extra corporal shock wave without dripsy then we have a condition called as priapism now priapism is what 
wow the erection here by looking at this only people will be like what this is what problem or what yes i will tell you why problematic thing so it is a erection more than four hours but it is a very much painful condition it's a painful erection of penis more than four hours okay so it is a pathological it is the <clears throat> most common cause is idiopathic why it occurs we don't know in children it can be due to sickle cell anemia other things are such as seldinafil a patient has taken a large amount of seldinafil usme kya socha tha ki okay sexual performance badhane ke liye seldinafil le lunga so patient took the seldinafil but the problem is so that became into a painful a painful erection for a long period of time now there is papa veron into cavernosa or even malignancy especially spinal malignancies okay now what is the problem here problem here is that if this erection persist for a long period of time priapism's complication is that it can cause a penile necrosis it can cause a necrosis of the penis so necrosis of the penis if it occurs then it is going to be a dangerous problem okay what happens here is that i told you one vein was there na dorsal deep vein that dorsal deep vein will become closed now fresh oxygenated blood cannot come into the penis if fresh blood cannot come into the penis automatically uh, penis tissue can undergo necrosis so this is the problem if penile necrosis occurs can lead to impotency okay so what is the problem here excessive blood has been accumulated there right just remove the blood so aspiration of the blood but for example the child was having sickle cell anemia the repeatedly it was occurring okay then what we are going to do we are going to do a operation with a shunt called as winter shunt okay so that is only called as coverno glandular shunt okay so from the cavernosal tissue we will divert the blood flow that is the sh the shunt name is winter shunt okay now there is a way to remember this also but that cannot be like you know by looking at the name itself you can remember it i think now let's go to the next important again based on the test is the examiner has two three topics i feel like they are also very very favorite questions for the examiner so first and most important concept to be understood what exactly is that uh, guys look here first let's start with the basic uh, important thing what is that blood supply blood supply to the gonads usually blood supply arterial supply is for what uh, hmm, from the gonads arterial supply arterial supply will come with the gonadal artery either testicular artery or ovarian artery okay all of us know that but here vein venous drainage is very important because look here this is the right side right kidney this is the left kidney always remember left left testicular vein or left gonadal vein remember left gonadal vein left gonadal vein okay always drains into left renal vein left renal vein this is a very very important point to be remember if there is some problem in the renal vein automatically left gonad will get affected be it ovary be it testicular now if we go into the next important the testicular blood supply here we can see there are multiple things we are getting here what is that we are getting a blood supply okay so through the inguinal ring there is a spermatic cord coming so in this spermatic cord we have what and all is there so we have what is that blood supply and also what is that spermatic cord is there okay now here is the most interesting thing that is the anatomy of the testicle itself so if you look at the testicle my dear students look here there is a covering this is the testicle tissue itself here we have a epididymis this is we have a epididymis okay followed by that we have a layer called as tunica vaginalis look at this tunica vaginalis it is completely covering what is that testicle so always remember tunica vaginalis completely covers the testicle if it is not covering then it can lead to a testicular torsion what exactly is this testicular torsion testicular torsion is this particular scenario what is happening this is a normal testicle this is a normal testicle now what can happen due to some congenital deformity called as bell clapper deformity testicle will start to rotate like this if rotation is there we call it as a torsion we call it as a torsion this testicular torsion is very important this is to be remembered let's understand so there is a deformity called as bell clapper deformity kuch nahi very simple hai. consider this is a testicle itself now testicle was completely covered by we have your epididymis like this and it was completely covered by a layer what is the name of the layer tunica vaginalis but instead of tunica vaginalis covering what will be there it would be something like this testicle above the testicle we have your epididymis coming like this okay followed by that this uh, tunica vaginalis layer will be like this it is incompletely okay kaisa lag raha hai ki bell bell matlab kya hota hai ganta 
सो इन दिल द क्लापर विल बी देर ना सो एक्साक्टली लाइक ए क्लापर एक्साक्टली लाइक ए क्लापर the testicle is sitting so this is only called as bell clapper deformity this is a very very favorite question what is the most common cause of testicular torsion bell clapper deformity okay so so what can happen inversion of testis and separation of the spermatic cord clinical features are very important it is usually seen in the children only sudden onset of pain in the scrotum redness swelling low grade pyrexia low grade fever will be there and most importantly remember this is only called as french sign there is a sign called as french sign so french sign is used to differentiate between epididymo arcitis and testicular torsion correct yeah. very simple first wear a gloves okay then what will you do is that you lift the scrotum up you lift the scrotum up so child came to the hospital with the complaints of pain sudden pain in the scrotum you lift the testicles up as soon as you lift the scrotum upwards either pain will reduce or pain will remain same if at all by lifting the testicle if the at all by lifting the testicle if there is a decrease of pain if there is a decrease of pain we call it as a positive french sign now if there is no decrease of pain that will be torsion if there is no decrease of pain torsion simple on the clinical examination elevation of the scrotum elevation of the scrotum if it decreases the pain positive french sign positive french sign means epididymo arcitis if a positive if negative means pain is not relieved then negative french sign then it is a testicular torsion this is a very important clinical sign and very important mcq so followed by that you can do a color doppler if available to check for the blood supply to the testicle because it is twisted na if it is twisted blood supply will be stopped so for example what is this treatment so treatment is very very important one so always remember when we are doing this treatment what exactly is that we are going to go for a scrotal scrotal exploration so we are going to explore the scrotum so if at all patient comes within first to 24 hours or or during the scrotal exploration during the surgery we know that testicle is still viable means it is not dead dead okay that time what you are going to do arcidopexy of both the testicle remember this why because bell clapper deformity if it is there in one testicle it will be there in the other testicle also that can lead to torsion later in life so once you have opened the scrotum repair both the testicle okay if it is been more than 24 hours okay or if we opened the testicle has undergone necrosis if testicle has undergone necrosis then you are going to remove that necrotized testicle arcidectomy but one more testicle is there and that can also undergo torsion because this clamber bell clapper deformity is bilateral so other side on the healthy side repair the testicle arcidopexy so arcidopexy if it is viable both the testicle if it is non viable remove the non viable testicle and treat the healthy one okay so means whenever we are doing treatment for bell clapper deformity both the testicle should be treated but one of them is already necrotized remove that necrotized one and treat the other one okay this is a very important mcq what is the treatment arcidopexy okay if testis is not viable then what you are going to do contralateral arcidopexy so this uh, type of image itself there can be give you and they can ask you an mcq this is also a very very common mcq then there is one more condition that is varicocele what is this varicocele varicocele is very very easy to understand see testicle has veins right now for the testicle we have something called as pampini form venous plexus we have it called as pampini form venous plexus so all of you know varicose vein means what dilated vein exactly here also what happens this venous plexus means if this is the testicle around the testicle multiple veins are there multiple venous plexus will be there if this plexus undergoes dilation means if veins become dilated that will lead to varicosity okay most commonly why it occurs we don't know but mostly it is seen on the left side that might be due to what is that that might be due to its anatomy because left gonadal vein drains into left renal vein okay so patient will have vague dragging sensation in the scrotum and most importantly sterility can occur and the patient will have patient will have what is that bag of warm feel usko lagta hai is if there is some 
some small small worms are present in the scrotum that type of feeling bag of worm feel this is a very very important in cq point okay so investigation of choice for the blood vessel the best one will be color doppler okay then the treatment will be what treatment will be sclerotherapy of course this is a small veins dilation so treatment will be sclerotherapy so we usually use what is it called as the pylodocanol pylodocanol also called as as we can use ascarol okay now now if the varicocele is bigger if there is a larger veins then we can go for directly remove the varicocele varicocelectomy now you might be thinking sir if you remove the vein or if you close the vein what is the alternate drainage so cremastric vein alternate vein is cremastric vein so what are the points to be remembered bag of worm filling investigation of choice okay alternate venous drainage finished so here you can see the bag of worms feel are dilated veins then we have a hydrocil seal means what we already know that enlargement okay hydrocil means there is a fluid filled lesion okay so accumulation of fluid around the testes within the processus vaginalis remember within the vaginalis process means that vagina tunica vaginalis layer is there na? within that there is a fluid accumulation most common cause is lymphatic filariasis okay so usually what is there lymphatic filariasis are, are that is infections and also seminoma can lead to this but most commonly filariasis is the important okay so there is one place there is a lot of fluid accumulated it will give a appearance as if there are three testicles is there three testicle appearance so there are types there are types so we have something called as look here look here scrotal scrotal hydrocele now scrotal hydrocele means within the scrotum there is an enlargement we have one more thing that is infantile that is infantile so infantile will be will be involving multiple areas like this okay that to specially inguinal canal but the last and most congenital are communicating congenital communicating what happens is that uh, this peritoneal layer itself will come down okay continuously it will come down into the scrotum it will remain here only okay that will create a communication with the peritoneum okay so there are three types uh, scrotal infantile congenital okay so infantile involves the inguinal canal congenital involves the communication with the peritoneum this is a very important point please remember these points uh, especially communicating because communicating hydrocele has a different method of treatment it is equal to that of what peritoneum itself is coming in very good if peritoneum is coming in means it is like a hernia so we are supposed to do herniotomy as a treatment here so Hydrocele can occur in the female. Yes, it can occur in the female in the inguinal canal. Okay. So what will be there? Scrotal enlargement. Of course, the scrotal enlargement will be there. So the scrotal enlargement, but it is a fluid filled volition. So since it is a fluid filled lesion, like this, trans elimination can be positive. This is a direct image based question. This is a direct image based question. Investigation of choice is what? Ultrasonography means what we are going to do is that below the lesion, you put the light. If you put the light, if it becomes uh, bright like this, we call it as a trans eliminating lesion. Trans eliminating lesions includes other lesions such as the uh, mm, meningocele then we have cystic hygroma okay then we have ranula so what exactly treatment so remember remember the first and most important for the congenital or communicating hydrocele what is happening is that look here the peritoneum itself is coming into the scrotum peritoneum itself if it is coming into the scrotum we call it as a congenital communicating type for that what is the treatment herniotomy this is the most important after three years of age we can do treatment is herniotomy okay Please remember, please remember, I have put it twice so that you will pay attention. Most of the students make this mistake. For everything, they will mark Jabba Valley's operation or Lord's operation. No, not like that. First and most important, herniotomy for a communicating one. Okay. Then we have two types of other procedure. What is that? That is Lord's operation and Jabba Valley's operation. Okay. So, this is a very, very important large operation for the smaller ones. For the larger ones, Jabovelli's operation. So, urological cancer. Urological cancer, usually we have adult kidney cancer. Adult kidney cancer, most common type of adult kidney cancer is what? Adenocarcinoma of the kidney. 
okay so it is also called as hypernephroma because it usually involves see if you consider this is a kidney so the, if you divide it into two two divisions we have upper pole of the kidney and we have lower pole of the kidney so upper pole of the kidney if it involves we call it as a hypernephroma so it is most common site where exactly it originates from the pc the proximal convoluted epithelium so it usually originate from the nephron in the nephron which part pct epithelium okay then in this also we have subtypes what is that a clear cell carcinoma and papillary carcinoma so it usually comes from the dct epithelium so how to remember this so please listen to me so in the nephron first we will have what is that bowman's capsule bowman's capsule followed by that we will have pct then we will have very good loop of inlay then we will have a dct all of us know that okay who comes first pelagonata pelagonata pct so pelagonata pct so what is the type of cancer we are going to get clear cell carcinoma dct kab aata hai late aata hai so here yahan pe kaun se aata hai papillary carcinoma sir what do, what are you trying to explain dekho pehla pct aata hai in alpha beta which letter comes first p or c c comes first okay duct mein kaun aata hai papillary papillary carcinoma pathologically will have a finger like projection here clear cell carcinoma pathologically will have a very clear nucleus and cytoplasm that is a difference okay so usually upper pole of the kidney patient will have painless hematuria this is also very very important painless hematuria especially massive painless hematuria then then patient can if at all left left kidney is involved then varicocele can rise then varicocele can rise patient will have complaints of mass weight loss hypertension so what are the clinical feature patient came to the hospital with the complaints of painless massive hematuria first and most thing to rule out is adenocarcinoma of the kidney adenocarcinoma of the kidney okay so once we are done with that let's get into the next important aspect what is that uh, kidney cancer so see kidney cancer can have a paraneoplastic syndrome see every tumor along with that tumor are cancerous growth if there is the other types of what is that other type of syndromes if it is associated we call it as a paraneoplastic to be specific how so i will tell you one example so we have small cell carcinoma of the liver so small cell carcinoma involves affecting of which part of the lung only but affect which involves most importantly called as neuroendocrine cell so this neuroendocrine cell can produce some hormones now hormone effect is separate tumor effect is separate so tumor effect is a tumor hormonal effect because of the tumor whatever extra we are getting paraneoplasm like that only in the kidney cancer also we will have paraneoplastic syndrome okay now what is this paraneoplastic syndrome so paraneoplastic syndrome usually it is associated with polycythemia means increase of rbc amyloidosis okay then non metastatic dysfunction called as staffer syndrome okay means here liver is damaged but not due to metastasis this is a point to be remembered okay so if there is a bladder cancer or if there is a cancer of the kidney what is the approach first urine cytology urine cytology means take the urine sample look for the cancer cell then you go for cystoscopy directly take an endoscope go inside the bladder okay then we are going to go for a usg approach if cystoscopy finds a lesion is present then you are going to take a biopsy best investigation of choice is cec okay so if the tall for example tumor size so this is a type of hypernephroma right so if tumor size is less than 4 cm okay so consider this is a kidney so there is a tumor right here okay so if the tumor size is for example 2.5 cm 2.5 so what we are going to do is that we are going to remove part of the kidney called as partial nephrectomy if it is more than let's consider some 6 cm is there so if 6 cm is there there is a high likely that this tumor might have involved multiple areas of the nephron so that is why full kidney itself we have to remove so that is only called as what is that radical complete nephrectomy so Four is the magic number in kidney cancer. Less than four, partial. If more than four centimeter, radical complete nephrectomy to be done. 
If bladder tumor, remember bladder tumor. Bladder tumor will consist of which type of epithelium? Transitional epithelium. So there is a transitional cell carcinoma. This is also very important. Most common cancer in the oral cavity is squamous cell carcinoma. In the esophagus, squamous cell carcinoma. So here where there is a transitional cell epithelium. So transitional cell carcinoma is the most malignant one. If there is a benign tumor, is there papilloma? Pap anywhere papilloma, if you hear finger-like projection. Okay, because of finger like projection is there, we call it as a kiss cancer, kissing cancer. So, bladder walls as if they're kissing each other because of that finger, sir. That is only called as a kiss cancer. But remember, this transitional cell carcinoma is the most common malignant tumor of the bladder. But, but, but we have a parasite called as schistosoma hematobium. Okay, if there is a hematobium infestation, schistosoma hematobium. Only then patient can develop squamous cell carcinoma in the bladder, but overall most common will be transitional. Then there can be adenocarcinoma agreed. Though all three are possible, but most common is a transitional one. Okay. Risk factor for everything smoking is injurious to health. So smoking is one of the leading causes or leading risk factors of bladder cancer. Okay. Then aniline dye. This is a very important aspect. Aniline containing dyes. Okay, especially they were used in textile industry. They will also increase the risk. So patient will have painless hematuria. So if painless hematuria is there, that means suggestive of possible cancer. Okay. So if there is a pain is there, means then what does it mean? Means the tumor has gone out of the bladder. It might be involving the other organs. So if pain is there. Okay, so first what you are going to do again, first do a cytology, then cystoscopy, followed by cystoscopy, now you know that inside the bladder you have a finger like projection tumor like this, now you have taken your camera and gone into the bladder, so you look at the tumor, take a biopsy and staging will be first staging we are going to do the CECT. The tumor marker is NMP22, this is an important MCT. So what is the treatment? If the carcinoma is present within the bladder, if it is present within the bladder, then we can consider immunotherapy with BCG or we can go for a chemotherapy. Now, sir, how does BCG work? The clear mechanism is not known. BCG works with magic if there is initial stages of bladder cancer. Okay. If there is a superficial bladder cancer, then TURBT means transurethral resection of bladder tumor. Means what exactly I'm trying to tell you is there is a tumor that is very, very superficially it is involving like this. Just go from here, take out the tumor. If there is an invasive cancer, means if it has spread to somewhere else, then you are going to go for a radical cystectomy, means remove the bladder, of course, of course it has spread and reconstruction and diversion. I told you, we use ileum for the making of the new bladder after thimble bladder I told her. So ileum we can use, if that cannot be done, directly take the ureters, connect it to sigmoid colon. Okay, so prostate cancer is one of the most common cancer in the elder males, elder male. Okay, so now what exactly happens is that consider this is the urethra. Surrounding the urethra, we had a prostate cancer like this. There is a prostate like this. Now the prostate has a cancer. Prostate has a cancer. There is a growth. Okay. Now when we look here, Look here, in the male, in the male, if you consider this is the pubic symphysis, if you consider this is a pubic symphysis anterior most, posteriorly we will have what is that? Colon, right? Intestinal bleed, large bleed. Now what can happen is that the prostate cancer can put the pressure on the large intestine. If it puts the pressure on the large intestine, stool cannot pass, patient can develop constipation. Okay, point number two. Then what can happen is that from here, the most commonly the tumor will go into the lumbar vertebra, lumbar vertebra. So metastasis will occur to the lumbar vertebra. So if there is a lumbar vertebra involved, uh, there can be osteolytic lesions. Because of this osteolytic lesion, what can be there? Prostate cancer, patient can come to you with the complaints of lower back pain and constipation. So spread locally, locally it can occur means surrounding the prostate or it can go through the lymph nodes. Most common lymph node is obturator lymph node and from the blood it can go to vertebra. Which area of the vertebra? Remember lumbar region 
and why they will go to lumbar region because of some venous plexus called as Bateson venous plexus. What is that? Bateson venous plexus. Because of that, it will spread. This is also a very important MCQ. So, what exactly we are going to do? Investigation of choice is what is that? Yes, we are going to take a biopsy. Biopsy after that, we use a grading name called as Gleason grading. This is also commonly used, uh, commonly asked question, Gleason grading. Okay, name. Now, for the staging, of course, we are going to go for what is that? USG, okay, transrectal. For distant metastasis, as usual, standard PET scan for the lumbar vertebra or if any other spread is there. Tumor marker also, I told you people, more than 10 serum prostate specific antigen. Our advanced stage means more than 30, 40, 30 or 40. Okay. Then treatment will be surgery. First, try to remove the prostate. Then hormonal therapy because prostate cancer depends upon the testosterone. So, what you can do? You can do one simple treatment. What is that? You can remove the testosterone stimulus. How can you remove the testosterone stimulus? By removing the testicle itself. So, if there is an advanced is there, we can go for surgical castration by subcapsular bilateral architectum. You can remove both the, both the, both, thank you, thank you, both the, very good, both of them. Which one? Testicles, of course, not, not any other parts, okay, both the testicles. Now we can use one more treatment. What is that? Yeah, why to do surgery? Just use a hormonal therapy. No? Why? What is that? Continuous GNRH analog. Continuously I will give GNRH analog. For example, luprolite. I will give, I will give, I will give. Uh, what will happen? So continuously if you give, FSH will reduce. There, there is no stimulation of testicle. There is no testosterone. Done. Okay. So in any of the prostate cancer, if I was in your place, I would remember like this. Point number one. In any of the prostate cancer, see, don't let the tumor be there in the body. Remove the primary tumor. Okay. Then, then next, if advanced is there, add a hormonal therapy. Okay. Or if hormonal therapy also not responding, remove the testicles also. Finished. Penile cancer. Again, penile cancer is a is very, very common question. And, you know, penile cancer is just like, you know, very easy clinical diagnosis. So, penis has which epithelium? Of course, it has a squamous epithelium. So, most common is squamous cell carcinoma. Risk factor. Remember, very poor hygiene. So, genital hygiene is very important. Multiple sex partners, human papilloma virus, and again comes a smoking. Okay. Then, then, Belenitis xerotica obliterans, then long standing genital warts. Okay. So, what exactly happens? Consider this is a penis of a person, right? Consider this is a penis of a person. Okay. Now, what will be there? There is a growth on the penis epidermis. Like what? Like a cauliflower. Okay. So, it is a type of most important point ulcero proliferative. Ulcero proliferative means as tumor grows, that area skin will be erosion will occur. Okay. And very bad thing is that very foul smelling discharge. Okay. Now, from the penis, the tumor can go into where? Very good. Inguinal lymph node. If it goes into the inguinal lymph node, inguinal nodes will start to enlarge. Agree. Now, sir, what is the interesting thing about this? See, it is by looking at the Patient only you can understand it is a suggestive of penile cancer. Then what you are going to take a piece, send it the biopsy. But uh, okay, we just remove the tumor, we can send them home. No, no, the problem here is that the death. Okay, what exactly happens is that erosion of, uh, see, from the inguinal lymph node. So from the inguinal lymph node, iliac vessels will involve. So, what can happen is that that can damage the femoral artery, for example. If femoral artery is there, femoral artery gets involved in instant bleeding. Okay. If instant bleeding is there, that will lead to death. So, clinical approach is very easy. Clinical examination by looking at that only you can understand. By looking at the growth. Then followed by biopsy. For staging, you can do MRI. For distant spread, we can do PET scan. This is a standard thing all of us know. That. Treatment is what? Huh? Remove the tumor surgery. So, testicular tumor, see testicular tumor more than surgery, it is very, very favorite question when you are considering other, other places, when you combine these tumors and study with gynae also, but anyways, we will study it here. Testicular tumor, see testicular tumor, 99% of the tumors are malignant, it is more like a statement like a CNS, CNS also considered most of the tumors are considered as a malignant. Most common testicular cancer is seminoma, most common testicular cancer is seminoma 
second most testicular cancer is teratoma. What do I mean by this? Remember, seminoma is not a tumor of semen, but testicular tissue itself. Okay. So, the testicular epithelium itself will involve. That is first point. Second, teratoma. All of you know what is teratoma? The tumor which involves uh, everybody, hair, nail, skin, not like that. The derivatives of all three germ layers means endodermal derivatives, ectodermal derivatives, mesodermal derivatives. So, hair comes from one thing. Okay, skin comes from one thing, glands come from one thing. All of them present in one tumor only, teratoma. For clinically, for looking at the most ugliest tumor, we can say is teratoma. Okay, so this is a most common in elderly, elderly patient, especially is lymphoma. Most common type of testicular cancer in elder patients is lymphoma. Okay, so clinical feature, of course, tumor is there, growth is there, enlargement, testicular enlargement, heaviness in the testicles. Okay, then then there can be secondary hydrosis. See, this is not a primary, but rather secondary. So, primary is due to lymphatic obstruction or diseases like pyloriasis. But here in this case, what can happen? See, anywhere if there is a tumor, right? So, it will definitely affect the nearby blood vessels. What do I mean by this? In the breast cancer, you studied orange peel appearance, right? Orange peel. Because subcutaneous lymphatics were closed. The same way tumor will close. What is that? Subcutaneous lymphatic vessels. If lymphatic vessels are closed, definitely patient can develop a secondary hydrosis. Okay. So, patient can also have epigastric lump and hemoptysis due to metastasis. Clinical approach, clinical examination followed by UAC. Then you can go for CECT of the so, there are multiple tumor marker based on the type of cancer. We can use alpha fetoprotein. Again, this is also a tumor marker used for what is that? Liver cancer. We can also use beta HCG, LDH level and placental ALP. So, treatment will be what is that? Treatment will be surgery. But one advantage is that we can consider radiotherapy because seminoma is a radiosensitive tumor. All right. Let's do some questions here. So, a patient PSA was 6 nanogram per milliliter. So, normal, normal level is less than 4. Okay. And also having increased volume of prostate on the USG with the increased frequency of urination and no other complaints. What is the pathogenetic treatment for this patient? Now, every person will start to answer me most of the time. What is that? That will be tamsulos. No, no, no. The drug of choice here, pathogenetic treatment, I told, this is high likely suggestive of BPH. For the BPH, drug of choice is finasteride. That is your 5-alpha reductase inhibitor. This is a frequently asked, very important question. Now, if they ask you, what is the treatment for? Treatment for urinary retention. Treatment for urinary retention treatment and difficulty in urination treatment then would be tamsulosin. But the drug of choice, single best drug is always a finasteride. Okay. Let's go to the next one. A patient underwent a surgical treatment of prostate. Okay. Surgical treatment of prostate. What are the surgical treatments we have? Yes. That is transurethral. We have one surgical treatment. That is your TERP. One surgical treatment was your TERP. Okay. And we had one more. One more treatment that is your holmium, holmium laser technique. Okay. Hmm. Now, post surgically, patient developed edema of the legs and altered sensorium. What caused this? Okay. So, this is a very, very interesting case scenario. So, patient underwent surgical treatment. It is not a laser, surgical means TERP. During the TERP, what do we use for irrigation? NS. If we use NS, what will happen? Hmm. Patient will have fluid over. Because of that, what will happen? The plasma will become dilated. Plasma will become dilated. So, if plasma becomes, plasma become diluted. So, if diluted plasma is there, automatically there is a dilutional hyponatremia. Okay. If you add more fluid into the circulation, so the blood will become diluted because of the dilution relative hyponatremia are also called as dilutional hyponatremia will occur so sir how do you know hyponatremia so for that suggesting one more symptom is there hyponatremia classic symptom patient will come to you with the altered sensorium and due to fluid overload edema of the legs is there 
very good very good edema of the legs is there that is a specific term i request you people to remember dilutional hyponatremia now again here only i will tell you people many students also get confused there is something called as siadh there is a this is called as siadh in siadh all the students will get confused at the end uvolemic Euvolemic hyponatremia. This is also a direct point to be remembered. Euvolemic hyponatremia is a clear cut suggestive of SIADH, but other cases you can have a dilutional hyponatremia. Please do not make mistake in these two things. Okay. Let's go to the next question. Okay. Let's see this. This one we are going to solve this question. A male child was found to have a male child was found to have hypospadias. Hypospadias means opening in the lower part of the penis, opening at the level of penoscrotal junction. Okay. And parents have a religious interest for circumcision. As a doctor, is circumcision allowed for this patient considering hypospadias? Okay, so since the child is having what is that penoscrotal junction, the penoscrotal junction means the opening is very very behind. So you have to almost throughout the length of the penis you will have to create a erector. So here, so considering is it allowed for the patient? Let's rule out one by one. So absolutely indicated, no absolutely not indicated. Now we are giving as a doctor medical opinion. We are not involving into any religious belief here. Let me be clear. Okay, so hypospadias is a relative contraindication. No, it is an absolute contraindication actually because we will not, will not be able to do the reconstruction. No need of medical opinion regarding circumcision. See, medical opinion will not be considered if there was no what is that that is your hypospadias. So, actually, medical opinion is required. So, absolutely, it is contraindicated above that that is patient's wish, okay. But as a doctor, we need to tell them that it is absolutely contraindicated because we will have to do a reconstruction. That time, prefuse will be used, okay. Then, let's go to the next question. A person was presented to casualty with persistent painful erection of penis for six hours. Six hours. Which of the following does not cause the above mentioned condition? First, what is the diagnosis? Let's make very good. That is a priapism. That is a priapism. If there is a priapism, yes, seldenafil can cause. Yes. Spinal malignancies can cause. Yes. Now, what about this one? Replacement of glutamate with valine. Let's see. So, if you have a replacement of glutamate with valine, what, which disease will come? Sickle cell anemia will be there. So, sickle cell anemia also can, what it is there, can also lead to priapism. So, what is the answer? Which of the not cause? The point is not cause. That is oral papaverin. So, papaverin only given into the cavernosa of the penis, then you need to think of what is that? You need to think of a priapism. If oral papaverin, it does not, it does not have a likely cause for what is that? Cause for your priapism. Okay. Let's go to the next question. A child was diagnosed with a congenital hydrocele. What is the treatment? Now, again, this is also a very important question. Many times mistakes are being made. So, let's see. So, child diagnosed with a congenital hydrocele. Congenital hydrocele means what is that? It is a type of communicating hydrocele or we can tell peritoneum has come into the scrotum. Peritoneum has come into the scrotum. If peritoneum has come into the scrotum, what is the treatment? Hydrocelectomy? No. Hernioplasty? No. Hernioraphy? No. The treatment will be herniotomy. Okay, remember the best treatment for is will be herniotomy, not hernioplasty, herniorapy, no, none of them. So the treatment is herniotomy to be remembered. Very, very important question. This can be asked also, and it has previously has been asked and uh, repeated as well. A patient of 42 year male was diagnosed with having a pyelonephritis caused by ascending infection. What is the diagnostic method for this pathology? So I told you people pyelonephritis is caused by a condition called as vesicouretric reflux. 
So what is the investigation of choice for vesicourethric reflex? Very good. What is the investigation of choice that will be your micturating cystourethrogram? Micturating cystourethrogram. So that will be the investigation of choice for what is that? Vesicourethric reflex. So micturating cystourethrogram is useful in two cases. What is that? That is your vesicourethric reflex. Vesicourethric reflex. And also it will be useful in one more condition. What is that one more condition? That one more condition is your posterior urethral valves. What is that? Posterior urethral valves. Okay. So this is the treatment for what is that? Treatment for, uh, sorry, diagnostic for your, very good. That is your pyelonephritis. A patient suspected of horseshoe kidney was done an IVP and confirmed the diagnosis. Which of the following is contraindicated in this patient? Okay. So horseshoe kidney. Overall outcome of the life will be no problem. Just a second, let me follow with the comments. Okay. Uh -huh. All right. Hmm. So, a patient suspected of horseshoe kidney, if there is a horseshoe kidney, what will be your strategy? Just to treat the complication. Yes, antibiotics are given for what? Urinary tract infection, of course. So if the most commonly followed by urinary tract infection, there is a high likely that of stones can develop. Okay. Then if stones is there, we can also do ESW. But uh, that lower part where it was fused, that part should never be cut should never be division. So, never divide the isthmus. This is a very important question. Okay. Then, let's go to the next question. A patient was brought to the emergency with a history of road traffic accident, was under the influence of alcohol, was suspected with a bladder rupture. What is the diagnostic of that? So, the investigation of choice for bladder rupture is what? A cystogram. Okay. So, why cystogram? Because contrast will be leaking. We can easily find that out. We can easily find that out. So that is the reason why we are doing what is that? That is your cystogram in this case. Okay. All right. Once we are done with this, let's dive into the next system. What is that? GIT especially. Now again, all the information I have put it here for one reason because when I give you, the, when you go through these slides also, it should be very easy for you people and also everything should be in one place only. Okay. So let's start the GIT. In that first, let's start with the esophagus. Okay, in the esophagus, all of us know very well what is that anatomy. In the anatomy, what is that length of the esophagus? Uh, length of the esophagus is 25 centimeter, and most importantly, it is located in the posterior mediastinum. So, when esophagus is going like this, it is located in the mediastinum only in the posterior part of the mediastinum. Remember this point. Okay, there are two sphincters, means two openings, and two in the, both the openings, there is a group of muscles which are working as a sphincters. So, what are the you? <clears throat> what is the use of this sphincter? Is what they can open or they can close. If they are closed, you cannot swallow anything. Okay. So you have two sphincters: upper esophageal sphincter and lower esophageal sphincter. Remember, upper esophageal sphincter is only called as cricopharyngeal sphincter. This is the narrowest part of the esophagus. Cricopharyngeal sphincter is the narrowest part of the esophagus. Why we should remember this? Because when passing an endoscope, where can we rupture the esophagus? High possibility is that when you are passing it through, especially if you are passing a rigid endoscope. Nowadays, all, all what is that? The flexible endoscopes only we have. But if you pass a rigid endoscope, here, the narrowest place is the place where rupture can occur. Okay. <coughs> So we have lower esophageal sphincter. The length of the sphincter is about 3 to 5 centimeter. But most important point to be remembered is uh, pressure. So because I told there is a group of smooth muscle which can contract, which can relax. Contract, relax. So the pressure becomes very important point. What is that? 12 to 25 mm of HD. Okay. So there are three constriction. Means esophagus is narrowed at three places. Place number 1, 2 and 3. Okay. One is cricopharyngeal sphincter. So, cricopharyngeal sphincter to the upper, upper incisors, that is your 15 centimeter. Then, second one, what is that? Division of the bronchus and arch of the aorta, it is 25 centimeter from the upper incisor. And the diaphragm is at from upper incisors, it is at 40 centimeter. So, why you are referring this? Especially, this will be very much useful during what is that? Endoscope. Okay. 
So first and most important, first disease let's study esophageal atresia. What is esophageal atresia? Atresia means absence of formation. Atresia means absence of formation. So first and most important, so the esophagus, how it will grow, you know, a blind end of the esophagus, up, upper one and lower one. Okay. Both of them grow in directions like this. Like this, it will come from down to up. One will come from up to down. After that, by the time of birth, esophagus will become like a pipe like this. Okay. So, this is during the development. Now, the problem is what? Now, the problem is this first segment is not formed. So, that will create a two blind ends like this. Now, what is this called as esophageal atresia? But this esophageal atresia, what can happen is that sometimes one part of the esophagus can communicate with the trachea. So, abnormal fistula formation will be there. So, this abnormal fistula formation is there. Then we call it as what is the tracheoesophageal fistula. So, tracheoesophageal fistula divided into five types. What is that? That is A, B, C, D, E. Okay. Most common type comes out of type C. This is a very important question. Most common type is comes out of type C. Okay. Kaise log most common hote dunia mein? Okay, so we say he uploadunka. What is that? That is your type C is the most common. What is this type C? Type C lower end of the esophagus. Is kesa juda hua hai? Trachea kesa juda hua hai. Okay, agar lower end trachea kesa juda hua hai. If lower end is attached with the trachea, now what can happen is that whenever a person breathes after birth, as baby breathes, from that easily what can go? Air can go into the stomach. Now, is the importance kya hai? Me bata do. Thodi dir me. I'll tell you. So, this is a congenital disease. It can be associated with a, <clears throat> associated with a group of anomalies called as Bacterial Anomaly. Bacterial Anomaly. Okay. So, what is this Bacterial Anomaly? <coughs> vertebral, vertebral defect, anorectal defect, cardiac defects like a patent ductus arteriosus or <coughs> what is that? Ventricular septal defect. Then, tracheoesophageal defect is possible. Then renal defects possible and limb defects. Okay. So these are the anomalies which can be associated called as bacterial anomaly. Okay. Now earliest sign kya hota hai? Polyhydroamnios. Polyhydro. Now polyhydroamnios, oligohydroamnios. If you are confused, I will tell you people it's in one minute you will very clearly understand and you will remember. Okay. So consider baby. Baby is in the way in the uterus. This is the uterus. Okay. Baby is in the uterus. Now, inside the uterus, baby will urinate. Baby will urinate. So, if baby urinates, that is only called as amniotic fluid. Now, later, guys, one second, there is some defect which is coming.
okay so audio video everything is clear i hope now okay mm, yeah so where were we we were talking about oligohydroamnios and polyhydroamnios right so polyhydro and oligohydroamnios are very interesting ones to be understood just okay so what happens is that baby will urinate baby will urinate that urine is itself is a amniotic fluid that amniotic fluid baby what it will do is that baby will swallow baby will swallow okay baby will swallow that is how the system is working. now if there is some other, other urinary tract defect urine is not formed if urine is not formed automatically amniotic fluid is reduced so urinary tract defects will lead to what is that oligohydroamnios oligohydro but if at all there is a defect associated with git like this one what is that that is your esophageal atresia now during this atresia what happens is that baby cannot swallow if baby cannot swallow it will keep on forming the urine amniotic fluid content will become more so if at all any gi abnormalities then there will be earliest sign will be polyhydroamnios okay so this is a point to be remembered now let's continue to the next aspect so earliest sign is polyhydroamnios this is a very very important mcq to be remembered now let's continue so what is the clinical feature immediately after the birth after the birth there is a continuous powering of saliva continuous powering of saliva why because see esophagus is closed at one end like this right so baby will form the saliva saliva will go into this part and again it cannot go any further so what will happen is that baby will start to continuously regurgitate the saliva continuous powering of saliva regurgitation and because of this saliva coming back what can happen aspiration so aspiration leading to pneumonia the most common complication of esophageal atresia or earliest complication is pneumonia okay initial evaluation what we are trying to do we are trying to establish a diagnosis take a ng tube nasogastric tube okay pass the nasogastric tube now nasogastric tube is what going from the nose all the way we are trying to reach the stomach but since this part is closed the nasogastric tube will come inside it will start to roll here only it will become like a coil okay so ng tube cannot be passed and also after that if you take a x ray of this one only we will find this coiling of ng tube okay and also which is the most common type i told type c if type c is the most common type what will happen is that air would have gone into the stomach so gastric bubble will look bigger so this is a very important x-ray finding these are the two important x-ray finding coiling of ng tube and distended stomach and continuous pouring of saliva now, then your clinical diagnosis is high likely what is that that will be your esophageal atresia with a fistula investigation of choices ct scan okay so what is the target is that target is what we are trying to restore the esophageal motility means we are trying to connect the both blend in, blunt ends so what we are going to do is that esophago esophagostomy can be done okay if at all the distance is very far we do a myotomy wait for some days let the esophagus grow then we can join it okay so the aim of the surgery is important esophago esophagostomy is the surgical procedure then there is one more condition called as dysphagia lausoria dysphagia lausoria is what is very simple so dysphagia means difficulty in swallowing now what happens this is due to aberrant vessel aberrant vessel means see nor so there is some blood vessel which is not taking the normal pathway okay so <clears throat> so what happens here is that look here so this aberrant right subclavian vein so subclavian vein has subclavian sorry the subclavian artery has gone all the way around the esophagus so we have we have what is that trachea behind the trachea we have a esophagus now blood vessel will come like this it will press the esophagus that's it okay so most common the point to be remembered is right subclavian artery is the most common cause this is a important question then <clears throat> let's go to the esophageal trauma esophageal trauma most commonly due to what is that foreign bodies in the esophagus most common site wherever it is narrow any foreign body can go there and get struck the most common site is cricopharynx so what is the management <clears throat> what is the management first and most important if foreign body is swallowed for the management for the foreign body first i will discuss the foreign body management if at all swallow okay there is no symptom nothing is happening you can look here foreign bodies okay 
so if there is no symptoms don't do anything no active treatment needed just give a mushy food with the mushy food it will come out easily but if there is some symptom okay so if there is some symptom like you know choking sensation okay choking sensation or maybe for example most common is choking sensation or maybe difficulty in swallowing that time immediately take an endoscope go inside hold the foreign body get it out that's it endoscopic removal of the foreign body okay for example this foreign body has perforated the esophagus okay so perforation of esophagus can occur because of one of the most common thing is due to iatrogenic means when when for example young doctor who is a resident doctor for example trying to do a endoscope by mistake near the cricopharynx what can happen perforate the esophagus okay so what we are going to do is that consider this was the esophagus right so there was what there was one small hole there was one small rupture esophagus can heal itself now all you need to do is that normally if you eat food right normally if you eat food food can leak okay so don't do, let that food to leak just what you are going to do you are going to put a nasogastric tube okay so food will be fed through the nasogastric tube within 5 to 7 days it will heal on its own okay then there is one more thing this is also a very favorite question and most confused by many students that is bore havis syndrome see bore havis syndrome has nothing to do with chronic alcoholism this is little bit different approach what happens here is that remember a person was binge drinking a 60 <coughs> or a 55 year old man binge drinking binge drinking means he started to drink today afternoon for example he was drinking throughout from afternoon somewhere in 1 o'clock in the afternoon till night 2 o'clock he was drinking alcohol little bit little bit now what can happen is that there is a high possibility they will vomit and also under the influence of alcohol now when they forcefully vomit okay suddenly esophagus pressure will rise in the pre, in the esophagus pressure will rise and wherever esophagus is weak that part will become torn so it happens spontaneously suddenly all the layers of esophagus are torn most commonly seen in elder patient that is only called as bore havis syndrome okay so sudden increase in the pressure ruptures in the weak area usually left lower posterior lateral wall okay now what will happen i told where is the esophagus going in the mediastinum so contents will leak into the mediastinum leading to mediastinitis so if in mediastinum is inflamed then the person will develop what is a chest pain okay now how exactly patient will come patient will come to you with the left sided chest pain that is pain subcutaneous emphysema vomiting there are three clinical feature what is that shoulder pain like pain similar to that of angina or mi then vomiting and also subcutaneous emphysema air air accumulation under the skin so these three symptoms together is only called as macular striat this is also a high likely question can be asked all of the following are a part of macular striat except what is macular striat macular striat seen with bore havis syndrome this occurs in a binge drinking sudden vomiting then will be rupture of esophagus leading to three clinical feature shoulder uh, shoulder pain that is the similar to that of pain radiating to the shoulder especially similar to that of angina then there will be what is that that will be subcutaneous emphysema you can call pathognomonic sign okay and vomiting macular striat these three very very important clinical feature okay now <coughs> first and most important patient came with what chest pain is that if chest pain is there always first approach rule out a cardiac condition ecg followed by that you can do a examination examination is what i told you people what is that subcutaneous emphysema so on the subcutaneous emphysema if you listen we can get a crunch called as hamans crunch or also called as hamans sign so pay attention to the a here it is not homans it is hamans homan sign is seen with dvt on the chest x ray what i told esophagus is ruptured now air would have entered into the mediastinum leading to pneumo mediastinum okay investigation of choice ct scan with oral contrast now remember here barium is contraindicated because in any perforation barium is contraindicated barium is contraindicated usually either we use iohexol or we can go for gastrography or we can go for gastrography okay so these are the two contrasts which can be used barium is contraindicated this is also important mcq then what you are supposed to do open the thorax okay clean that area because contents has leaked so mediastinal lavage jadu pochalaga 
थर्कोटोमिक करो झाड़ू पोछा लगा के एंटीबायोटिक्स वगैरह देके फिर व्हाट एंड ऑल यू आर गोइंग टू डू यू आर गोइंग टू डू ए सर्जिकल रिपेयर ओके सो थर्कोटोमी मीडियास्टिनल लवाज फॉलोड बाय दैट एज पर द रिक्वायरमेंट आर इफ दैट इज सर्जिकली रिपेयरेबल देयर ओनली इफ देयर इज अ लेस कंटामिनेशन डू द सर्जिकल रिपेयर इफ ग्रॉस कंटामिनेशन इज देयर जस्ट अ मीडियास्टिनल लवाज फॉलोड बाय मीडियास्टिनल लवाज पुट अ एनजी ट्यूब टू द पेशेंट ओके एंड एंड give the treatment with antibiotics and wait for the esophagus to heal then let's go to the next condition aklesia cardia aklesia cardia also very important question so aklesia cardia what happens is that uh, there is a upper esophageal sphincter and also lower esophageal sphincter and your stomach like this one this lower esophageal sphincter will contract okay so this lower esophageal sphincter will contract and and there is no relaxation so contraction of lower esophageal sphincter so if smooth muscle is contracting pressure is increased so what happens what happens is that so failure of relaxation of lower esophageal sphincter this is due to what why exactly it occurs we don't know but absence of ganglionic cells in the outer back plexus the same type of disease will come in one more thing that is only called as very good that is only we have a <coughs> most interesting menetrier's disease okay let's talk about this first our back plexus so what can happens it can also occur as a result of uh, diabetes mellitus or a chagas disease okay then clinical feature patient will have contracted esophagus so inability to swallow the food okay so the patient will have a dysphagia now most importantly dysphagia to liquid is a clear cut sign of aklesia cardia okay clear cut sign of aklesia cardia why because liquids does not have much weight okay so liquids cannot put the pressure on the sphincter tone but solids can do that so first difficulty for swallowing for liquids then think of aklesia cardia then automatically contents will start to come back aspiration and all the food masses will accumulate in the esophagus only creating a bad breath that is only your what is that halitosis okay first investigation barium swallow with the x ray in the barium swallow with the x ray we can get a bird beak appearance or a pencil tip appearance all of you know this and absence of gastric air bubble okay now the problem here is that if lower esophageal sphincter is contracted it would look something like this for you aklesia cardia would look something like this here. okay so here pressure is more so automatically esophageal manometry remember i told you pressure will be more because of the contraction so what is that esophageal manometry normally 10 to 25 mm of hg will be there in achalasia cardia remember 25 to 100 there is one more disease this is only called as the des what is that des des means what is that diffuse esophageal spasm diffuse esophageal spasm so continuously multiple places has undergone what is that contraction like this this is a type of diffuse esophageal contraction where there is a high level of what is that high level of high level of pressure so where pressure of the esophagus will be more than 300 it looks like a corkscrew appearance so corkscrew esophagus pressure more than 300 suggest you of des 25 to 100 with the difficulty to swallow the liquid then you are achalasia cardiac so what is the treatment we can give the treatment to cause the relaxation of the lower esophageal sphincter we can give what is that calcium channel blockers especially which one l type calcium channel blockers l type ccbs which l type ccbs you can give that is amlodipine for example okay what do i mean by this these are the ones which are very specific to smooth muscle dihydropyridines you can consider nitrates they will also relax the smooth muscle then we can consider botox if it is does not respond then you can go for what is that pneumatic balloon dilation simple as that take an endoscope go into the esophagus inflate a balloon okay best surgical treatment is heller's myotomy heller's myotomy if that is not there poem this is also a very interesting procedure poem per oral esophagomyotomy there are two types of surgical treatment hellers myotomy and per oral esophagomyotomy these are the treatment for your achalasia then gerd gerd is also a very important question here first line management many people make a mistake so all of you know that so gastroesophageal reflex content from the stomach is coming back into the esophagus 
So what and all, there are some protective factors such as uh, lower esophageal sphincter, gastric emptying, esophageal peristalsis, and most importantly, one fa factor called as transient lower esophageal sphincter relaxation. What do I mean by the transient? Transient means for a brief period of time, for a brief period of time, lower esophageal sphincter will relax. In a day, there will be around three to three to five times lower esophageal sphincter will relax on its own for some time. If that relaxations become more, so if the esophageal sphincter is relaxing for more amount of time, contents can come back easily. If TLO RS is increased number, if there is an increased number, that means it can lead to growth. Okay. So risk factors such as what is that smoking, alcohol, tea, coffee, drugs, spicy food, all of these things, okay. Clinical feature, all of us know that patient will come to you with the complaints of, sir, I'm having a heartburn. Along with the heartburn, patient will also have regurgitation and patient will have epigastric pain, okay. Now, along with the epigastric pain, remember, remember this regurgitation can go to so level that it can create a throat pain also. It can irritate all the way up to your, what is that? That is uh, your ear also, middle ear also, it can irritate. Why middle ear and throat are communicating, right? Exactly. So, what is our approach? The first approach, see, in the clinical treatment, clinically what we are going to do? Clinically, we are going to do a PPS. Usually, PPS will give in the start itself. But first advice for your MCQ, first step of GERD management is lifestyle modification. Lifestyle modification. Okay. Followed by that, you can consider PPIs. After giving PPI also patient comes back, then directly do a upper GI endoscopy. Because we, we need to make sure whether if there is a stomach ulcer is there or not. Okay. So upper GI endoscopy should be done. Okay. So gold standard method for the GERD diagnosis is very important. Many people make a mistake here only. Esophageal manometry, esophageal pH metry. Esophageal manometry is done for achalasia cardia. Esophageal manometry is done for achalasia cardia. 24 hour pH measurement is done for, hmm, very good. What is that done for GERD? Okay. So here also please look here 24 hour EH pH monitoring. So we are going to use a criteria here called as Johnson Demister scoring. Again, they can directly ask you which of the following diseases uh, take the help of this Johnson Demister scoring for the diagnosis that is your GERD. Treatment is, see normally nowadays we don't prefer surgical treatment for GERD. Okay, usually if at all there is nothing helps, then you can go for fundoplication. If not, usually we go start with PPAs. PPAs combined with prokinetics, like for example, levosulfuride or etopride, these type of drugs are combined and used. Okay. So first and most common complication is esophagitis because acid is coming back into the esophagus. Right? So agar tumara, matab, skin pe acid girega, to pe kya hoga? burn ho jayega, uske baad inflammation. The same way, if esophagus gets in contact with the stomach acid, esophagus will also get burnt and pe kya ho jayega? inflammation ho jayega. Yeah? So uh, followed by that let's think repeatedly this scenario was occurring wap is again and again again and again a lot of acid was esophagus ko kya ho continuously damaged damaged so now what will happen it will start to become a chronic chronic type of condition and healing will kick in once healing comes into the story healing kya karega fibrosis bana dega kya connective tissue so connective tissue ban jayega if there is a connective tissue what will happen automatically it will not have any elasticity so that will remain very narrow that is only called as constricture of the esophagus then last one is that barrett esophagus barrett esophagus ka kya scenario hai? very simple lower esophageal sphinx lower esophagus mein normally we will have squamous epithelium only now this uh, repeated acid coming back and back and back, uh, it will cause metaplasia, especially in the Barrett esophagus, we will have a intestinal columnar metaplasia. Matlab intestine ki jaysa epithelium aajayega. Intestine ki jaysa epithelium to protect itself. Okay. So intestinal metaplasia. So hume kaisa pata chalega? How do we know that intestinal metaplasia? The most important hallmark use kara goblet cell. Goblet cell normally kaam pe hote Where do they locate it? There in the small intestine, especially in the duodenum. Okay. Goblet cells are responsible for the production of a large amount of mucus we can tell. Okay. Ab waham pe jo intestine mein rehna chahiye, that epithelium is found in the esophagus and hallmark cells are goblet cell. If goblet cell agar dikh raha hai tumhe, to clearly you know what is that? You know that that is your hallmark is goblet cell. Then you know that the intestinal metaplasia. So 
इफ देर इज एनी वेयर इफ देर इज ए मेटा प्लेस बॉडी में एनी वेयर इफ देर इज ए मेटा प्लेस थिंक अबाउट दिस वन वेरी वेरी सिंपल इफ देर इज मेटा प्लेस हाई रिस्क ऑफ कैंसर तो अब आया कौन कॉलमुलर एपिथेलियम मतलब कौन सी हो गया सेक्रेटरी मींस व्हिच एपिथेलियम इट बिकेम सेक्रेटरी एपिथेलियम सो इफ देयर इज एनी ट्यूमर व्हिच ऑरिजिनेट फ्रॉम द सेक्रेटरी एपिथेलियम दैट विल इंक्रीज द रिस्क ऑफ एडेनोकार्सिनोमा तो इन द बैरेट इसोफेगस इन द लोअर इसोफेगस व्हिच कैंसर इज मोर कॉमन एडेनोकार्सिनोमा ओके नाउ अपर वन थर्ड मिडिल वन थर्ड में कॉमन कैंसर कौन सी होगी हम दैट विल बी वर्स कॉमन सेल कार्सिनोमा so upper ga endoscopy with a biopsy will be the investigation of choice treatment of choice remember hamesha ke liye yaad rakho first drug is hamesha pta se treatment of choice is pta okay so agar if there is a severe dysplasia moderate to severe if there is a dysplasia then you can go for a surgery so surgery mein kya karenge lower esophagus ko remove karenge we are going to remove the lower esophagus then we are going to pull the stomach little bit upwards and we are going to anastomose them together we will call it as a resection of lower esophagus with a gastric pull up operation chalo aage badhte next one hiatus hernia hiatus hiatus means hiatus is nothing but see hiatus hernia means kya hota kuch bahut simple hai ye hai tumhara diaphragm hai na to ye diaphragm ke through kya hoga there will be one structure called as esophagus so this esophagus will go inside and what will be there stomach तो अब क्या होगा ये ओपनिंग है ना इसोफेजस इसोफेगस के लिए ओपनिंग है ना डायफ्राम में यहां से अगर कुछ भी कंटेंट इफ सम कंटेंट इज कमिंग आउट फ्रॉम हियर वी कॉल इट एज व्हाट इज दैट हियरटस हर्निया तो क्या बाहर आ गया सो अब सिनेरियो समझो सी वेयरएवर सी इसोफेगस एंड स्टमक देयर मीटिंग राइट दैट इज ओनली कॉल्ड एज जी जंक्शन गैस्ट्रोइसोफेजल जंक्शन है ना तो पॉसिबिलिटी नंबर 1 इज लाइक दिस This is the diaphragm, ठीक है अब क्या हो गया इसोफेगस आया ओके नाउ इट इज लाइक दिस एंड हियर स्टोमक इज कमिंग आउट ओके तो ये देखो गैस्ट्रो इसोफेजल जंक्शन तो कहां पे है इट इज इन दबडमेन ओनली बट ए पार्ट ऑफ स्टोमक इज कमिंग आउट पॉसिबिलिटी नंबर वन ओके पॉसिबिलिटी नंबर टू वट इज दैट दिस इसोफेगस and stomach a part of stomach can come out like this also so is yahan pe dekho gastroesophageal junction kya ho gaya thorax mein okay so based on that only we have two things there is something called sliding hiatus hernia or paraesophageal hernia theek hai to sliding esophageal hernia isme kya hota hai gastroesophageal junction will come into the thorax like i explained here isme para paraesophageal hernia or giant hiatal hernia are also called as rolling hernia that will be like this so stomach is coming out but esophageal junction is in the abdomen so is this sliding hiatus hernia associated with the reflux disease but paraesophageal will be weakness of the diaphragm okay so clinical feature will be chest pain chest pain ho sakta hai and also heartburn and discomfort and difficulty in swallowing dysphagia will be there फर्स्ट इन्वेस्टिगेशन चेस्ट एक्सरे बट बेस्ट हमेशा सीटी स्कैन विद कॉन्ट्रास्ट ताकि हमें पता चलेगा कि इसोफेगस एंड स्टोमकस स्टेटस क्या है एंड द ट्रीटमेंट विल बी फंडोप्लिकेशन फंडोप्लिकेशन नाउ लेट्स गो टू द नेक्स्ट कंडीशन कॉल्ड एज जंकर डाइवर्टिकुलर जंकस डाइवर्टिकुलर आल्सो आस्क मल्टीपल टाइम्स तो पहले जंकस डाइवर्टिकुलर में जाने से पहले देयर इज समथिंग कॉल्ड जंकर नेक्रोसिस जंकर नेक्रोसिस अकर्स विद अ टाइफाइड फीवर इन द एंटीरियर एंटीरियर एस्पेक्ट ऑफ द एब्डोमेन में होता है ओके बट जंकस डाइवर्टिकुलर इज डिफरेंट ओके इट इज आल्सो कॉल्ड एज क्रिकोफेरिंगियल एकिलेसिया ओके तो इसमें क्या होता है देखो पोस्टीरियर फेरिंगियल वॉल आउटपोच होता है फेरिंगियल वॉल posteriorly about the cricopharyngeal sphincter okay matlab in the pharynx we have a weak area uska naam hai kelians dehiscens ye kelians dehiscens ke through through this kelians dehiscens consider this is a kelians dehiscens here what will happen your esophagus this posterior wall will become outside to aisa banega ki diverticula banega isi ko bolte hain jankar diverticula to jankar diverticula something like this see posterior taraf mein Towards the posterior side, a out pouching is there. इसी को बोलते हो क्या? Jenkers diverticula. अब Jenkers diverticula, which is also called as cricopharyngeal achalasia. 
ओके तो पेशेंट का क्लिनिकल फीचर क्या होगा पहले सुनो यहां पे इफ द डायवर्टिकुला इज देयर फूड मासेस विल कम एंड एक्युमुलेट नो इट्स नॉट फिनिश्ड इट सो फूड मासेस विल गेट एक्युमुलेटेड तो दिस फूड मासेस विल बिकम स्पॉइल्ड देन दे विल क्रिएट अ बैड ब्रेक रिमेंबर दैट विल बी हैलिटोसिस विल बी देयर ओके then because of this infection very easily this uh, oral anaerobes now they can spread into the lung creating a pulmonary abscess and a difficulty in swallow ab kya ho jata hai there is a swelling right there is a swelling now agar aap is swelling ko agar tum press karo if you press this uh, that will create uh, that will create a gurgling sound okay so this uh, gurgling sound is only called as boys sign called as what boys sign फिनिश now if there is a 2 to 4 cm diverticula we are going to go for a diverticulopexy means we are going to repair the diverticulum area but agar more than 4 cm hai dol bach means dolmen operation what do i mean by dolmen operation actually we are going to use a type of see multiple steps stapler will be there linear circular okay so we are going to put a linear stapling just we are going to close the diverticula with a staples okay so 2 4 6 is the cut off in the zenker diverticulum okay chaliye stomach and duodenum ke bare mein important points dekh lete hain ek bar hai na to in the stomach we have parts of the stomach first one most important the earliest part is cardia then we have the fundus of the stomach body of the stomach and pyloric region okay pyloric region now so here we have parts of the stomach all of us know which type of epithelium is there in the stomach the type of epithelium we have is hmm palmar epithelium very good now look here here we have a duodenum duodenum also has parts so it has four parts d1 d2 d3 and d4 okay so this one will be your d1 this one will be your d2 this will be your d3 and this will be your d4 okay four parts of the duodenum now apna upper gi endoscope ab jo एंडोस्कोप पास करते हो थ्रू द माउथ तो यूर अपर जी आई एंडोस्कोप अपर जी आई एंडोस्कोप कहां तक जाता है इट विल गो अप टू द लेवल ऑफ वी कैन सेंड इट ओनली अप टू द लेवल ऑफ सेकंड पार्ट ऑफ डियोडिनम इफ यू ट्राई टू पास फर्दर यू माइट डैमेज द डियोडिनम ओके तो पहले तो ये ये बहुत फेवरेट क्वेश्चन है रिपीटेड आया हुआ है डियोडिनल एट्रेसिया सो डियोडिनल एट्रेसिया मतलब एब्सेंस ऑफ फॉर्मेशन तो ए पार्ट ऑफ व्हाट इज दैट डियोडिनम इज नॉट फॉर्म पार्ट ऑफ डियोडिनम अगर फॉर्म नहीं हुआ है तो क्या हो जाएगा मान के चलो डियोडिनम वुड बी समथिंग लाइक दिस सो कंसीडर यू हैव योर फर्स्ट पार्ट ऑफ द डियोडिनम सेकंड पार्ट इज देयर ओके नाउ फॉलोड बाय द देयर इज अ ब्लाइंड एंड एंड द नेक्स्ट एस्पेक्ट ऑफ द डियोडिनम इज ओके सो पार्ट ऑफ द डियोडिनम इज नॉट इफ पार्ट ऑफ द डियोडिनम इज नॉट फॉर्मड व्हाट विल हैपन यहां पे कौन होता है हु विल बी ओपनिंग हु विल बी ओपनिंग द ओपनिंग विल बी योर बाइल डक्ट ओपनिंग विल बी योर बाइल डक्ट okay common bile duct and pancreatic duct okay so common bile duct and pancreatic duct uh, common bile duct and pancreatic duct kahan pe open hota hai d2 mein at the level of sphincter of rd all of us know that to yahan pe kya ho jayega dekho this bile will come here theek hai but kya hai ki jo bhi food do meal ko baby whenever drinks uh, nothing can go further if it cannot go further remember what will happen is that uh, this bile will come out with the vomiting called as a bilious vomiting so if there is any duodenal obstruction is there after the d2 there is a bilious vomiting especially kis liye hota hai this is also very important point due to failure of fusion of foregut and midgut okay foregut and midgut fusion nahi hone se duodenal atresia aata hai this is a most common cause of intestinal obstruction in your newborn and yahan pe yahan pe hame karna kya hai dono ko jod dena hai duodeno duodenostomy karna hai duodeno duodenostomy kar dena so that will be your duodenal atresia so duodenal atresia ke baad aisa kai signs aane wala hai let's look at those signs also now look here my dear students uh, we have multiple gas bubbles we can see this is only called as a single bubble sign single bubble sign to so, ye ek bubble dikh raha hai 
यहाँ पे देखो ये एक बबल ये हो गया स्टोमक दिस वन विल बी वर स्टोमक ठीक है ये हो गया तुम्हारा डिओडिनम ठीक है दोनों ओके इफ टू टू एयर बबल्स आर सीन देन वी कॉल इट एज ए मल्टीपल बबल साइन तो इफ देर इज एब्सट्रेक्शन देखो ये है ना उनका दिस इज योर इसोफेगस दिस इज योर स्टोमक फॉलोड बाय दैट यू हैड ए डिओडिनम ओके नाउ कंसीडर देयर वाज अ ऑब्स्ट्रक्शन हियर स्टोमक आउटलेट मैप्स तो कितना साइन दिख के कितना एनलार्ज होगा सिर्फ एक स्ट्रक्चर एनलार्ज होगा कौन होगा वो स्टोमक तो एनलार्ज स्टोमक विल क्रिएट हाउ मेनी बबल्स वन बबल सिंगल बबल्स अगर मान के चलो वही ऑब्स्ट्रक्शन इफ द सेम ऑब्स्ट्रक्शन विल पुट इट समवेयर इनटू द डिओडिनम विल पुट इट समवेयर इनटू द डिओडिनम अब क्या होगा डिओडिनम भी तो एनलार्ज हो जाएगा एंड आल्सो स्टोमक इज आल्सो इन द सो डिओडिनम विल लुक वन बबल एंड स्टोमक लुक्स वन मोर बबल कॉल्ड एज डबल डबल बबल साइन अगर डिओडिनम के बाद हो जाएगा देन वी कैन कॉल इट एज ट्रिपल बबल और आल्सो वी कैन स्मॉल इंटेस्टाइन इफ देयर इज अ स्मॉल इंटेस्टाइनल ऑब्स्ट्रक्शन वी कॉल इट एज अ मल्टीपल बबल साइन सो if the stomach obstruction is there single bubble if duodenal obstruction is there double bubble if jejunal obstruction is there triple bubble if no other parts of the small intestine is obstructed then we will get what is that multiple bubble sign okay so this is also a classic example for your multiple bubble sign now there is one more disease called as annular pancreas annular pancreas mein kya hota hai kuch nahi a duodenum man ke chalo now normally pancreas is communicating and it used to be looking like this something hai na now instead of that the pancreas what will happen is that duodenum ko aisa surround kar so ring like pancreas will be there so a ring like pancreas what will happen it is going to obstruct the duodenum so what will it create what will it create yes of course yahan tak band ho jayega band ho jayega to duodenal obstruction so there will be bilious vomiting bilious vomiting ट्रीटमेंट करना क्या होगा डिओडिनो डिओडिनोस्टोमी सेम देन वी हैव वन मोर डिसीज कॉल्ड एज सीएचपीएस कंजेनिटल हाइपरट्रोफिक पाइलोरिक स्टेनोसिस देखो कंजेनिटल हाइपरट्रोफिक पाइलोरिक स्टेनोसिस इसका सीन क्या होता है इसका सीन बहुत सिंपल बनता है सो दिस प्रेजेंस विद द फर्स्ट वीक ऑफ द लाइफ तो इन द स्टमक वी हैव कार्डिया फंडस बॉडी एंड आल्सो वी हैड योर पाइलोरस ओके सो दिस वाज योर पाइल ये एरिया कौन था पाइलोरस था तो ये पाइलोरस में क्या हो जाएगा देखो पाइलोरिक पार्ट विल हैव ए स्मूथ मसल ठीक है स्मूथ मसल ये स्मूथ मसल हाइपरट्रोफी हो हाइपरट्रोफी मींस एनलार्जमेंट जैसा ये स्मूथ मसल विल बिकम हाइपरट्रोफ ऑटोमेटिकली ये क्या होगा स्टोमक कंटेंट आगे नहीं जा पाएगा सो स्टोमक कंटेंट कैन नॉट गो फर्दर सो व्हाट विल हैपन इज दैट दैट विल बी लीडिंग टू व्हाट दैट विल बी लीडिंग टू स्टेनोसिस ऑफ द पाइलोरिक रीजन ओके सो व्हाट एग्जैक्टली फर्स्ट वीक ऑफ द लाइफ में आएंगे now what happens when you palpate the abdomen if there is any enlargement we are going to get what is a lump we will get so ye lump ka characteristic is bahut important hai to ye kaisa hota hai ek olive like lump what is it an olive like lump when you palpate that is a point number 1 okay so vomiting hoga of course stomach ka outlet band ho raha hai na slowly stomach outlet is becoming closed now vomiting will occur pro vomiting content will come from where from the stomach to stomach ke andar kya bile hota hai kya stomach ke andar to nahi hota so now what will happen there will be non bilious vomiting aur pura acid bahar chala gaya all the acid goes to the stomach is lost leading to metabolic alkalosis and also there is a condition to be remember because of this metabolic alkalosis body will start to compensate by creating a paradoxical aciduria paradoxical aciduria so this is a point to be remembered paradoxical aciduria is seen with what thps okay a bahut important question theek hai now investigation of choice evc so treatment kya kar sakte we can do one easy treatment balloon balloon dilation means take an endoscope put it inside dilate but the treatment of choice is ramsted steromyotomy ramsted steromyotomy to ye dekho esophagus mein esophagus mein aap log sirf myotomy karte ho in esophagus you people do only myotomy okay remember q q ki why because in esophagus there is no serosa इन द इसोफेजियल लेयर्स देयर इज नो सेरोसा तो इसोफेगस के अंदर आप करोगे क्या ओनली एंड ओनली व्हाट यू आर गोइंग टू डू मायोटमी बट व्हेन यू कम इनटू द अदर पार्ट्स एज सच अ स्टोमक और डिओडिनम सो हियर वी हैव अ आउटर मोस्ट कवरिंग कॉल्ड एज सेरोसा विल बी देयर सो वी आर सपोज टू कट टू लेयर्स व्हाट इज दैट सेरोसा एंड मस्कुलरिस लेयर सर हमें समझ नहीं आ रहा है आप क्या समझाने की कोशिश कर रहे हो मुझे पता है कि ये 
वो क्या रहे थोड़ा कंफ्यूज हो जाते तो हम लोग क्या करेंगे बाहर से तो आउटर मोस्ट लेयर कौन है सिरो सा है ना तो ऐसा है तो हम क्या करेंगे बाहर के तरफ से जाएंगे पहले सेरोसा को कटेंगे आफ्टर कटिंग द सेरोसा वी विल कट दिस मसल लेयर तो मसल लेयर कट करने से क्या हो जाएगा प्रेशर रिलीज हो जाएगा है ना बिकॉज इट वाज कॉजिंग ऑब्स्ट्रक्शन नाउ यू कट द मसल लेयर इट विल रिलीज द प्रेशर सो दैट टाइप ऑफ प्रोसीजर इज ओनली कॉल्ड एज रैमस्टेड सेरोमाइटिन ठीक लेट्स गो टू द नेक्स्ट नेक्स्ट कांसेप्ट गैस्ट्राइटिस गैस्ट्राइटिस में दो तरीके होते हैं अक्यूट एंड क्रोनिक ये भी बहुत बार पूछा गया अक्यूट गैस्ट्राइटिस हमेशा कॉज्ड इदर बाय एनेसेट ड्रग्स और अल्कोहल तो क्लिनिकल फीचर अक्यूट गैस्ट्राइटिस पेशेंट विल हैव हेमेटेमिसिस एंड मेलेना पेशेंट विल हैव हेमेटेमिसिस एंड मेलेना मैनेजमेंट क्या करोगे आईवी फ्लूइड्स तो बिकॉज़ ऑफ हेमेटेमिसिस और मेलेना देयर ओके इफ देयर इज अ सीवियर हेमेटेमिसिस इज देयर ओके फाइंड आउट द डू या अपर जीए एंडोस्कोपी अपर जीए एंडोस्कोपी में आपको दो पॉसिबिलिटीज कौन सी वेजल से ब्लीड हो रहा है पता चल जाएगा अगर पता चल गया उसके अंदर एंडोस्कोपिक स्क्लेरोथेरेपी या एंडोस्कोपिक एड्रेनालिन डायथर्मी क्लिप लाइगेशन जो चारों में कुछ भी कर सकते हो ओके यूजुअली प्रिफर्ड वन इज क्लिप लाइगेशन ओके थैंक यू थैंक यू सो मच ओके नाउ इफ नॉट इफ नॉट क्या करेंगे सो इट्स ऑल्सो वेरी इजी इफ वी कांट डू फाइंड द ब्लड वेजल ठीक है टेंशन मत लो नाउ व्हाट वी आर सपोज्ड टू डू मान के चलते हैं ऐसा कोई एक ब्लड वेजल का नेटवर्क वी हैव बिग ब्लड वेजल नेटवर्क गोइंग लाइक दिस ओके वी डोंट नो व्हिच वेजल इज ब्लीडिंग ओके थैंक यू वी डोंट नो व्हिच वेजल इज ब्लीडिंग है ना तो अब क्या करेंगे टेक वन कॉन्ट्रास्ट पुट इट इनसाइड As soon as we put a contrast inside, if at all, for example, let's consider this was the blood vessel which was leaking. So blood vessel, if it is leaking, blood to bar aare. Uske saath saath contrast bhi bar aaye. Along with that, contrast will also come out. Okay. So if contrast also comes out, then it is very clear what is that? Which blood vessel is ruptured? Is that this one? So we have got to know. So now what do we do? We light it. Okay. Or we can go for therapeutic embolization. In this, in this, in this, human dura mater to use kar sakte. थैंक यू सो मच गाइस तो चलिए आगे बढ़ते हैं मैलोरी विस्टर ये कंडीशन ये मैलोरी विस्टर मैं बताता हूँ लाइक आई हैव सीन मेनी ऑफ यू मेकिंग दिस सिल्ली मिस्टेक अल्कोहल दिखते ही आप लोग कंफ्यूज हो जाते हो आंसर मतलब केस क्या है ठीक है पहले मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंटली सी मैलोरी विस्टर एंड बोरिहावी दे आर नॉट ए कॉन्सिक्वेंस ऑफ अक्यूट अल्कोहलिज ठीक है The Mallory Vincent, this one are not a consequence of chronic alcohol. They are a consequence of acute alcohol. So Mallory Vincent is very simple. So in the gastroesophageal junction, I said that stomach and esophagus are connected to the gastroesophageal junction. So in the gastroesophageal junction, there is a tear. So if there is a tear in the gastroesophageal junction, then we call it as a Mallory Vincent. If Mallory is there, is there? Where will it come from? Seen with alcoholics, alcoholics means chronic alcoholism. Is there anything like that? No. If the patient vomits with a higher pressure, can occur. Clinical feature? What will happen? Clinical feature? What will happen? Good evening. Clinical feature will be hematemesis. Okay. So hematemesis. So what you are supposed to do? Again, stop the bleeding. Supply, give the IV fluids. The treatment will be done. You don't have to complicate anything. Okay. Admit the patient. Monitoring is important. तो लेट्स गो टू द नेक्स्ट वन पेप्टिकल तो पेप्टिकल सर डिजीज में भी क्या कुछ कॉम्प्लिकेशन है क्या उतना कुछ कॉम्प्लिकेशन नहीं सिंपल पार्ट है सुनो तो पेप्टिकल सर डिजीज मतलब थ्री प्लेसेस इट कैन कॉज अल्सर एक हो गया इसोफेगस ओके एक हो गया व्हाट इज दैट वेरी गुड व्हाट इज दैट इसोफेगस एक हो गया तुम्हारा स्टोमक एक हो गया डीओरिंग ठीक है तो ये तीनों प्लेसेस में अल्सर बट मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंटली हमें कहां पे देखनी चाहिए स्टोमक एंड डीओरिनल अल्सर के तो यहाँ पे हम एक टेबल बनाया हुआ है बहुत सिंपल उसने तो डिओडिनल अल्सर एंड अनदर वन विल बी योर स्टोमक अल्सर ओके तो ये दोनों के अंदर कई डिफरेंस है इफ यू लुक एट दिस डिफरेंस ओनली यू कैन फाइंड आउट द केस वेरी इजीली ओवरऑल ऑल ऑफ द सिनेरियोस मोस्ट कॉमन पेप्टिक अल्सर इज मोस्ट कॉमन वन इज डिओडिनल अल्सर ठीक है स्टोमक इज लेस कॉमन डिओडिनल अल्सर इज एसोसिएटेड इन यंग पीपल एंड हियर इट इज मोस्टली एसोसिएटेड विद द ओल्ड एज पीपल Usually these are duodenal ulcer क्या होते हैं छोटे होते हैं पर multiple हो सकते हैं but in the stomach usually large 
okay so in dono mein difference is what this is the most important difference see there is blood group association etc blah 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 is there but this is the very important if the patient eats the food and get the pain immediately after eating the food then it is a stomach ulcer if the pain comes after 2 to 3 hours of the meal then it is a duodenal ulcer sir aisa kyu aisa kyu ki ye dekho esophagus duod stomach and duodenum theek hai to main kya karunga food khaunga immediately after eating the food what will happen hcl will come so immediately hcl will come it will act on the ulcer pain will be there okay that is the reason agar agar duodenal ulcer ho to after 3 to 4 hours what will happen food will start to go into the duodenum so once food will start to go into the duodenum food ke sath kon jayega acid jayega along with food will go so after acid goes into the where into the duodenum automatically duodenal ulcer will start to act up and cause the pain so that is the difference which you need to remember okay now patient will have a epigastric pain weight loss and melena can be there okay so here approach is what approach is very important first lifestyle modification koi bhi heartburn leke aata hai heartburn epigastric pain leke aata hai lifestyle modification batao followed by that ppas de do followed by upper gi endoscopy with a biopsy upper gi endoscopy with a biopsy kyu karoge kyunki you need to find out what is causing the ulcer also because ulcer can be due to helicobacter pylori as well okay so helicobacter pylori will have a different treatment first let's look at the सर्जिकल ट्रीटमेंट ऑफ डिओडिनल पेप्टिक अल्सर तो डिओडिनल पेप्टिक अल्सर में तो आप लोगों को समझने की सिंपल बात है वी हैव ए नर्व कॉल्ड एज वेगस है ना ये वेगस कौन है पैरासिंपेथेटिक ठीक है अगर आप पैरासिंपेथेटिक नर्व सो दिस इज वन ऑफ द वाइडली स्प्रेडिंग नर्व इफ यू स्टिमुलेट दिस वेगस नर्व व्हाट विल हैपन इट विल इंक्रीज द एसिड प्रोडक्शन फ्रॉम द पैरिटल सेल ऑल ऑफ द नर्व so now what will happen you yeah, have a vagus nerve which will have multiple branches which will be going like this right it will be going like this. now i will select one vagus nerve i will select one vagus nerve where what is there where that is innervating the stomach and causing the acid production so usi vagus branch ko karta so that is only called as highly selective vagotomy okay aaj ke time pe surgical treatment for as a mainstay treatment nahi hai okay so mainstay treatment usually medical management hi hota hai okay so truncal vagotomy with drainage operation also we can do okay okay if there is a if there is a see if there is a truncal vagotomy ke baad bhi agar recurrent aata hai to antrum antrum of the stomach ko hata sakte ho so these are the surgical procedures see since it is a revision session i can't go into the depth of everything i'm sorry for that now stomach ulcer stomach ulcer ke liye aap log kya kar sakte ho bilroth 1 ya bilroth 2 surgeries kar sakte ho okay that is only called as ruyen by gastro jejunostomy and this procedure also done also done whenever we are removing the stomach we have two types bilroth 1 and bilroth 2 so bilroth 2 look here part of the antrum is removed directly connected here but bilroth 1 is not like that bilroth 1 itself itself is a this one what is that that will be your ruyen by gastrostomy gastro jejunostomy तो अगर आप सर्जिकल ट्रीटमेंट करके वेगस नर्व को कट करोगे तो तुम्हें एमसीक्यूस आएगा एग्जाम के अंदर क्यों क्योंकि देर इज ए हाई लाइकली मेनी टाइम्स एमसीक्यूस आर आस्ड व्हाट इज दैट कॉम्प्लिकेशन ऑफ सर्जिकल ट्रीटमेंट तो अगर तुमने डिओडिनल अल्सर को सर्जिकल ट्रीटमेंट दोगे एक कॉम्प्लिकेशन होगा डिओडिनल स्टंप ब्लो आउट तो डिओडिनल स्टंप ब्लो आउट मतलब ये होता है देखो यार तो व्हाट विल बी देयर तो यहां पे कट किए थे आपने कट करके एक पार्ट ऑफ द डिओडिनम था ना इसको बोलते हो डिओडिनल का स्टंप ये डिओडिनल स्टंप क्या होता है टपटप से पास ओके देन डंपिंग सिंड्रोम इज आल्सो कॉल्ड एज पोस्ट सीबल सिंड्रोम नॉट काबल पोस्ट सीबल सिंड्रोम ओके डंपिंग सिंड्रोम यस डंपिंग सिंड्रोम के अंदर दो तरीके के होते हैं तो आप लोग डंपिंग सिंड्रोम पैथोफिजियोलॉजी सब समझने की टाइम नहीं है तुम्हारे पास अभी तो व्हाट व्हाट यू हैव टू डू इज दैट यू नीड टू रिमेंबर व्हाई अर्ली सिंड्रोम अकर्स व्हाई लेट सिंड्रोम अकर्स दिस बोथ आर एमसीक्यूज व्हिच आर रिपीटेडली आस्क्ड आल्सो ओके नाउ डंपिंग सिंड्रोम मींस पेशेंट विल हैव वेरी मच अर्ज टू डेफोकेट अर्ज टू डेफोकेट ओके तो there are two types one is early dumping syndrome due to osmotic load in the intestine ye blood ke andar nahi hai intestine ke andar theek hai jab jo bhi khana khaoge wo kya karoge wo kya hoga dekho food khaoge food seedha jayega stomach stomach se seedha kahan gaya jejunum ab jejunum ke andar kya ho jayega osmotically active compounds through the food whatever gone they will pull the water and immediately we will de develop a urge 
and there is one more thing that is due to late that happens due to something called as reactive hypoglycemia again you need to remember this word reactive hypoglycemia what which of the following is the cause of which of the following is the cause of late post sebal syndrome remember wo aapko confuse karne ke liye ye bhi dega ek reactive hypoglycemia dega ek reactive hyperglycemia dega yahan pe hypo ya hyper confusion और दूसरा क्या करेगा वो रिलेटिव हाइपोग्लाइसेमिया एंड रिलेटिव हाइपरग्लाइसेमिया करके लगा ठीक है रिलेटिव नहीं है रिएक्टिव हाइपोग्लाइसेमिया पॉइंट टू बी रिमेंबर्ड एंड रिपीटेड रिएक्टिव हाइपोग्लाइसेमिया ओके देन पोस्ट वैगोटोमी डायरिया आपको लग सकता है कि सर वेगस नर्व क्या करेगा पेरिस्टाल्सिस को बढ़ाएगा पेरिस्टाल्सिस को बढ़ाने से नॉर्मली वेगस नर्व स्टिमुलेट करने से डायरिया होनी चाहिए थी बट बट अब वेगस को कट कर दिया आपने तो कट करने के बाद क्या होता है सो दिस इज एग्जैक्टली पोस्ट वैगोटमी डायरिया हाउ एग्जैक्टली दिस इज कास्ट वी आर नॉट वी डोंट नो क्लियर मैकेनिज्म बट आफ्टर कटिंग वेगस आफ्टर सम पॉइंट ऑफ टाइम डायरिया भी लगता है एंड बी कोल एंड आयरन डेफिशिएंसी ऑफ कोर्स अब्जॉर्प्शन नहीं हो पाएगा एंड आपने स्टमक को रिमूव किए थे तो इंट्रेंसिक फैक्टर नहीं होगा तो आयरन बी कोल डेफिशिएंसी आएगा देन पेशेंट कैन डेवलप गॉलस्टोन एंड गैस्ट्रिक कैंसर रिमेंबर दिस वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट कोई भी जीए सर्जरी करोगे पोस्ट सर्जिकली देर इज ए हाई लाइकली दट पेशेंट विल डेवलप दिस वॉट इज दट डेवलप द कैंसर ओके विद इन टेन ईयर्स देर इज ए हाई रिस्क ऑफ कैंसर सो कॉम्प्लीकेशन कॉम्प्लीकेशन कैन बी अगर तुमने ट्रीटमेंट नहीं किया तो अल्सर क्या होता है ब्लीड हो जाएगा आर देर माइट बी परफोरेशन ये परफोरेशन बहुत इंपॉर्टेंट एम सी क्यू है बहुत इंपॉर्टेंट तो इनिशियल सिक्स आवर्स इज अ वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट क्रूशियल पीरियड आल्सो कॉल्ड एस क्रिसेंट पीरियड तो ये पेशेंट कैसा आएगा पेशेंट के अपडोमेन हैज बीन इनसाइड द अपडोमेन स्मूथ लाइक यू नो दैट विस्कस हैज बीन परफोरेटेड सो फॉर एग्जांपल योर डियोडिनम और स्टोमक का समथिंग इज परफोरेटेड सो परफोरेट हो जाएगा तो स्टोमक के डियोडिनल कंटेंट विल लीक इनटू द अपडोमेन लीडिंग टू व्हाट इज दैट पेरिटोनाइटिस तो पेरिटोनाइटिस हो जाएगा तो पूरा अपडोमेन के अंदर पेन आने लगेगा टू कॉल्ड एज डिफ्यूज अपडोमिनल पेन क्या होता है diffuse abdominal pain ab diffuse abdominal pain hai to what is the first clinical investigation first investigation or first thing we do for a surgery patient with abdominal pain we have one physical examination physical examination ke andar palpation of the to aap log palpate karoge even if you touch a little bit also if you touch a little bit also patient will feel so much pain that wo itna matlab muscles pura tight karke rakhega taki tum log if you try to palpate the abdomen you are you are going to feel like as if you are palpating some cardboard called as cardboard like rigidity okay management iv fluids doge okay abdominal x ray abdominal x ray mein aapko pneumo peritoneum are also called as air under the air under or gas under which dome of the diaphragm is also a very important under right dome of the diaphragm to aapko koi surgery matlab x ray loge to abdomen ke andar aisa dikhega so if you can notice here the patient is having a see This is the the white line you can follow. This is your diaphragm. Diaphragm का नीचे क्या हो गया? Air आ गया. Sir, why can't you consider ये वाला? Left वाला क्यों consider नहीं? तो left वाला consider नहीं कर पाएंगे क्योंकि why will not consider because we'll have a confusion. क्योंकि normally also stomach is there ना? So stomach का bubble confuse हो जाए. But right side में तो क्या होना चाहिए? Liver होना चाहिए. But instead air has come here means automatically it is telling there is a leak into the peritoneum called as pneumo peritoneum. Investigation of choices CT scan with a contrast, but this may be contrast barium mana hai. Okay, then treatment will be peritoneal lavage. Peritoneal lavage. Okay, and दूसरा हो सकता है या आपने treatment किया but healing will occur. But healing will lead to fibrosis, leading to a stenosis. Healing will lead to stenosis. Okay, तो ये stenosis होने के लिए stenosis होने के बाद आपको stomach ऐसा कुछ दिखने को मिलता है called as teapot stomach. ओके बेरियम के अंदर टी पॉट स्टोमक मिलेगा देन बेजोर्स सी बेजोर्स इफ बेजोर मींस फॉरेन बॉडीज इन द जीआईटी स्पेशली इन द स्टोमक नाउ व्हाट कैन हैपन इज दैट सो सम पीपल हु इज हैविंग फॉर एग्जांपल ट्राइकोटेलोमेनिया एज अ साइकैट्रिक डिजीज सो दिस पीपल विल स्टार्ट टू एंड अप ईटिंग देयर ओन हेयर तो ये सारे क्या करेगा ऑल दिस हेयर आर मे बी अननेसेसरी फॉरेन बॉडीज व्हाटएवर दे कैन गो ऑन एक्युमुलेट इन द स्टोमक so if hair is accumulated we call it as a trichobezoar trico means hair okay if uh, milk product is accumulated if uh, milk product milk products is accumulated sir ye bhi ho sakta hai ki jeev ho sakta hai if milk products is accumulated we call it as a lactobezoar lactobezoar 
ठीक है अगर वेजिटेबल मास या कोई भी प्लांट मास कुछ फंस जाएगा तो उसको बोलते हो वॉट इज दाइट बेजोन देन वॉट इज दट द नेक्स्ट कॉन्सेप्ट इज तो नेक्स्ट कॉन्सेप्ट क्या सर इसका ट्रीटमेंट क्या है इसमें कुछ नहीं सर्जिकली रिमूव करो और क्या करो सर्जिकली रिमूव तो लेट्स गो टू द नेक्स्ट कॉन्सेप्ट बेरियाट्रिक सर्जरी बेरियाट्रिक सर्जरी के अंदर व्हाट इज इज दिस इज सर्जरी वेर वी डू फॉर व्हाट इज दट ओबेसिटी ठीक है तो ओबेसिटी के लिए तो प्लीज लिजन टू मी सो फॉर एग्जाम्पल इफ ए पेशेंट इज हैविंग ओबेसिटी बॉडी मास इंडेक्स मोर देन थर्टी फाइव और कोई कोमारबिडिटी या थायरॉइड डिसीज या आजमा और फॉर एग्जाम्पल लाइक यू नो कार्डियोवास्कुलर डिसीज डायबिटीज इफ इट इज देयर देन वी कैन गो फॉर देयर आर इफ द बॉडी मास इंडेक्स इज मोर देन फोर्टी ये कहान का दुनिया में ठीक है बट इन एशियन कंट्रीज वी आर गोइंग विथ ए माइनस टू पॉइंट फाइव परसेंटेज वॉट डू आई मीन बाई दिस अगर थर्टी फाइव था ना तो हम लोग क्या है थर्टी टू पॉइंट फाइव मोर देन थर्टी टू पॉइंट फाइव विथ कोमारबिडिटीज बेरियाट्रिक सर्जरी मतलब वेट कम कराने के लिए सर्जरी ठीक है अगर विदाउट दिस थिंग थर्टी सेवन पॉइंट फाइव होगा विदाउट कोमारबिडिटी बेरियाट्रिक सर्जरी बेरियाट्रिक सर्जरी वॉट एक्सैक्टली इज देर सो वी हैव मल्टीपल टाइप्स ऑफ सर्जरी वन इज देर वन इज कॉल्ड एज रू एन वाई गैस्ट्रिक बाईपास ओके तो आई विल शो यू दट प्रोसीजर हियर इट देखो ये पीछे देखो रू एन वाई गैस्ट्रिक बाईपास यहाँ पे क्या किया हम लोगों ने यहाँ पे इसोफेगस इसोफेगस को किसके साथ जोड़ दिया सो इसके साथ जोड़ दिए जेजनाम के साथ ठीक है नाउ यहाँ पे डिओडिनल सेक्रेशन था इसे तो हम लोग यहाँ पे क्या किए वी आर स्किपिंग द स्टोमक ठीक है तो उसके वजह से क्या होता है पेशेंट विल फील फीलिंग वेरी इजीली मतलब उसको लगता है कि वो ऑलरेडी ज्यादा सो मोस्ट इफेक्टिव इज स्टोमक को ही बाईपास करो रू एन वाई गैस्ट्रिक बाईपास अदर्स आर देर ओके अदर्स वट इज दट एल एल ए जी बी ओके लैप्रोस्कोपिक लैप्रोस्कोपिक एडजस्टेबल गैस्ट्रिक बैंडिंग यहाँ पे देखो एक बैंड लगा अब क्या होगा स्टोमक का वॉल्यूम कम हो गया स्टोमक वॉल्यूम कम हो गया तो द पर्सन विल ईट फूड बट ही विल फील अपेटेट वेरी इजिली मतलब उसको लगेगा कि पेट भर गया तो खाना कम हो जाएगा सो वी कैन ऑल्सो डू सर्जरी लाइक दिस ऑल्सो वी कैन डू ए बैंड वी कैन डू वट इज दैट वी कैन डू दट इज दैट गैस्ट्रिक बाइंडिंग or we can go for a surgery called a sleeve gastrectomy sleeve gastrectomy also can be done okay then once we understood that let's get into the next one hepatobiliary system so hepatobiliary system all of you know that we have right lobe of the liver we have left lobe of the liver that is divided by what is that that is divided by your round ligament or ligamentum teres okay then we have imaginary line which divides the liver into two halves called as cantilever line okay then we have a lobes lobes left lobe and right lobe are also we have segments of the liver okay so isme hame kya padhna hai so biliary atresia biliary atresia absence of biliary channels right so sun lo yahan pe kya hota hai liver from the liver kya hoga so ye sab biliary channels aayega wo sab combine okay what is that uh, common hepatic duct banega chd common hepatic duct ye common hepatic duct kiske sath mil raha hai सिस्टिक डक्ट के साथ मिलता है सो इट विल क्रिएट अ कॉमन बाइल्ड डक्ट है ना तो अब मान के चलो कोई भी कंजेनेटल डिफेक्ट के वजह से है अगर अगर कोई भी पार्ट ऑफ दिस बिलियरी ट्री नहीं बना इफ देर इज एब्सेंस ऑफ बिलियरी ट्री दैट इज ओनली कॉल्ड एज बिलियरी सो इफ कॉमन बाइल्ड डक्ट वी आर गोइंग टू टाइप्स टाइप्स आर डिवाइडेड इनटू थ्री टाइप्स गो फ्रॉम डाउन टू अपवर्ड्स ओके सो वी हैव राइट हेपेटिक डक्ट we have left hepatic duct we have sorry left hepatic duct left hepatic duct okay now so type 1 if common bile duct hi nahi hai to absence of cbd type 1 agar common hepatic duct nahi hai then what is that type 2 type 3 mein kya hota hai ya right or left right or left any one of them can be absent or both can be absence of right or left hepatic duct is only called as biliary atresis ठीक है तो बिलियरी एट्रेस हो गया 
तो बाइल नहीं जाएगा तो बाइल पिगमेंट्स क्या होगा बिलीरुबिन कहाँ जाएगा ब्लड में चला जाएगा क्योंकि ये इंटरसेंट में तो नहीं जा पाता तो जिसके वजह से क्या होगा जॉन्डिस आएगा जॉन्डिस एंड ऑल्सो स्टीएटोरिया There is a steatoria. Why steatoria? Because normally bile is required for fat absorption. If bile is not coming, then fat absorption will not happen. Free fats in the stool is called as steatoria. If fat absorption is not happening, then fat soluble vitamin absorption will not happen. ADE ke deficiency can also occur. Okay? So approach. Approach case agar hai. Approach case agar hai. Patient ka clinical feature dekh lo. If patient comes to you with a jaundice, pehle LFT karo. If patient comes to you with a complaints of jaundice, first investigation will be LFT. अगर पेशेंट कम्स टू विद द कंप्लेंट्स लाइक का पेन लेके आ रहा है देन यूएसजी करो ओके बट यूजुअली एलएफटी फॉलोड बाय यूएसजी अपडमेन एक स्कैन करते हो हाइडा स्कैन सो व्हाट इज द यूज ऑफ दिस हाइडा स्कैन तो हाइडा स्कैन इज गोइंग टू टेल यू बिलियरी चैनल अगर ड्रेन कर रहे हैं कि नहीं कर रहे ओके सो द इन्वेस्टिगेशन ऑफ चॉइस इज हाइडा स्कैन तो व्हाट इज दिस वी आर गोइंग टू डू ए टाइप 1 इफ टाइप 1 इज देयर We are going to hepatic or jejunostomy. Type one मतलब क्या था? Type one is common bile duct. तो common bile duct नहीं है तो jejunum को ले आओ इसके साथ जाओ. तो कहीं पे भी कुछ भी गया होता है jejunum कोई ऊपर नीचे घिसते रहो. क्यों? क्योंकि because jejunum is a very flexible structure. If type two, for example, common absence of common hepatic duct, then we are going to go for a kasai operation. Kasai operation. So what is this Kasai operation? This is a very important one to be remembered. This is called as hepatico porto enterostomy. Hepatico porto enterostomy. So this biliary atresia is common in which Asian country? That's Pakistan. Okay. Then cholidocal cyst. See cholidocal cyst ke andar aap loon ko zada kuch ye karne ki zorrat nahi hai. Yaan pe kya hota hai ki bile duct whatever is there na biliary tree wo dilate honne lagta hai. Okay. Wo kya hota hai? Dilate ho jata hai creating a cyst. So, on and off jandis hoga, then, then the investigation of choice will be ERCP. Again, cyst excision karke treatment will be what is that? Similar to that of Kasai operation only. Then if you not treated, patient can develop complications like cholangitis, cholidocolithiasis, cholangiocarcinoma, among which for our exam very important widely asked question is cholangitis. So, aga hai cholangitis. So, cholangitis hota kya hai? So, now listen to me, we have your, what is that? Very good. Right hepatic duct, left hepatic duct. Dono jud ke kya bana? Common hepatic duct. Common hepatic duct combined with a cystic duct. And we have what is that? Common duct. Thik hai? So, yaham pe liver, yaham pe what is there? You have your gallbladder. Okay? Here you have your liver. Okay? Now, this duct is going, for example, imagine, is mein kya hoge? Ek stone aata hai. Kya hai? So, if there is a stone in the common bile duct, now what will happen? All the bile will start to accumulate here only and it will start to cause inflammation. So, inflammation of the bile duct is called as cholangitis. So, if any patient has cholangitis, if the patient is having a cholangitis, what can cause the cholangitis? So, one possibility is that, where is the stone? Bile duct. What is that? What is that? Common bile duct may stone aega. Aega kaan se gall blood. So gall blood or stone can come and cause the obstruction. Possibility number one. Or the stone can be present in the bile duct itself. Or it might be associated with pancreatic head cancer. Or it can be associated with the condition like cholidocal cyst. Ye koi bhi condition mein cholangitis aega. To cholangitis ka examiner ka favorite kya hai na? Ye dono. Triad and pentad. Now listen to me. Pain, fever, jaundice. Patient will come to you with the abdominal pain. Fever will be there. Jaundice will be there. Okay. So if all these three clinical feature is there, then we call it as a charcoal triad. Okay. Abhe jaundice ke andar bhi konsi bilirubin badega? Ye bhi yaad rakhiega. Usually in cholangitis, the bilirubin elevated mostly is conjugated type of bilirubin. Conjugated bilirubin will be elevated. Okay. Now, अगर तो दिस इफ पेशेंट डेवलप्स हाइपोटेंशन एंड मेंटल कंफ्यूजन हाइपोटेंशन एंड मेंटल कंफ्यूजन देन वी कॉल इट एस ए रेनॉट स्पेंटर तो चार कोस ट्रायड पेन फीवर जॉन्डिस पेन फीवर जॉन्डिस ओके आ चेस्ट पेन सबक्यूटेनियस एम्पेसेमा वॉमिटिंग वेरी गुड दैट इज योर मैक्लर स्पेन so treatment kya karo ke ERCP, ERCP is nothing but endoscopic retrograde cholangiopancreaticography that is the image you can see here. So aap ERCP ke time pe agar tumhi picture dee dee ga. Okay examiner gives you a picture and ask you what is this black color thing which you can see on the radiograph. This is only your endoscopy. 
दिस ओनली यूर एंडोस्कोप ठीक है अब ध्यान से देखोगे दिस इज यूर बिलियरी थ्री दिस इज यूर बिलियरी थ्री ये कौन हो जाएगा तुम्हारा कॉमन बाइल ठीक है तो अब प्रॉब्लम क्या था कुछ तो ऑब्स्ट्रक्ट करके कॉमन बाइल डक्ट और समथिंग वाज ऑब्स्ट्रक्टिंग द कॉमन बाइल डक्ट एंड कॉजिंग द इन्फ्लेमेशन तो रिमूव दैट ऑब्स्ट्रक्शन एंड इन्फ्लेमेशन तो यू आर गोइंग टू गो फॉर अ ईआरसीपी एंड फॉलोड बाय ईआरसीपी देखो यहां पे क्या होता है ना ईआरसीपी में ना सो यू हैव योर डुओडिनम लाइक दिस ओके नाउ देयर वाज अ ऑब्स्ट्रक्शन ओवर हियर एंड द डुओडिनम एंड पैंक्रियाटिक डक्ट वाज कंबाइनिंग विद द पैंक्रियाटिक डक्ट विल कंबाइन and all of them will open at the level of what at the level of very good at the level of sphincter of artery to ab kya karoge endoscopy ko leke aaoge theek hai yahan pe pehle sphincter ko cut karke andar contrast bhejoge fir picture lo that is only ercp but ercp diagnosis ercp can be used for use for treatment kaisa yahi ercp ko use karke i can remove the stone ठीक है अब स्टोन को उठा के लाने के लिए कोई ना कोई इंस्ट्रूमेंट चाहिए होगा ना वो इंस्ट्रूमेंट का नाम है डॉर्मिया बैस्केट द नेम ऑफ द इंस्ट्रूमेंट इज कॉल्ड एज डॉर्मिया तो ईआरसीपी कैन बी बोथ डायग्नोस्टिक एंड ट्रीटमेंट तो ईआरसीपी एंड फॉलोड बाय दैट देखो अब तो निकाल तो दिए बट बाद में व्हाट कैन हैपन सी व्हाट यू डिड सो फार इज दिस ओनली ना यू रिमूव दिस व्हाटएवर द स्टोन वाज देयर नाउ व्हाट कैन हैपन दिस प्रॉब्लम माइट अकर रिपीटेडली तो हम लोग क्या करेंगे एंडोबिलियरी स्टंट एक स्टंट लगा देंगे यहां से कनेक्शन में ठीक है, that is only endobiliary stent. Okay, so remember ERCP can be both treatment and also your what is that diagnostic. Okay, then चलिए आगे बढ़ते हैं colloidal colloidalithiasis. Colloidalithiasis is nothing but very good gallstones. तो gallstones can be of three types: cholesterol, pigmented, and mixed stones. तो cholesterol stones, pigmented, pigmented are usually associated with what is that? हाँ, where there is a high level of hemolytic jaundices. ठीक है then we have common ones are cholesterol तो कुछ भी अगर patient has gallbladder stone even patient doesn't know doctor doesn't know no symptom nothing no active intervention is required ठीक है अगर अगर if there is some symptoms are there okay what are the what is the best treatment best treatment is best treatment is laparoscopic cholecystectomy ठीक है अब अगर कोई symptom नहीं है see there is no symptom तो no active treatment is required करके मिल गया but but if no clinical feature patient does not have abdominal pain nothing is there but if any of these possible scenario agar if the patient is having a large stone more than 3 cm right now no symptom but rather we will advise for the removal only okay agar multiple large stones are there remove age zyada ho raha hai remove it because even if it becomes even more older patient then what is can happen is that patient might not be compatible with surgery so radically remove this then pregnant female if the patient is having a typhoid fever sir a typhoid fever to sab ko aa jata hai so what is this story the typhoid fever is very important kyunki typhoid what is salmonella typhi salmonella typhi can remain in the bile for a longer period of time maybe up to 3 years okay then अगर कोई बेरियाट्रिक सर्जरी कर रहे हो तो निकाल दीजिए हिमोलाइटिक अनेमिया हिमोलाइटिक अनेमिया इफ वी नो दैट देयर इज अ हाई पॉसिबिलिटी दैट द पर्सन विल गेट द स्टोन्स अगेन एंड अगेन रिपीटेडली बिकॉज़ बिकॉज़ ऑफ द हिमोलाइसिस एक्सेसिव पिगमेंटेड स्टोन आर सो ओके सो दिस इज अ स्टोरी ऑफ योर व्हाट इज दैट स्टोरी ऑफ योर कोलीलिथियासिस ओके तो सिम्टोमेटिक आएंगे तो क्या होगा सिम्टम्स क्या होगा पेन इन द राइट हाइपोकॉन्ड्रियम एंड क्लिनिकल साइन व्हाट वी विल गेट इज मर्फीज साइन okay what is a murphy sign so murphy sign and most importantly remember anorexia can be there now most of the students will not accept this but remember epigastric pain also can be the clinical feature of cholelithiasis okay fever vomiting pain jaundice murphy sign will be present best investigation is hida scan but in usually usually investigation we do commonly is uhc abdomen तो व्हाट वी आर गोइंग टू डू वी आर गोइंग टू गो फॉर अ लैप्रोस्कोपिक कोलिसिस्टेक्टोमी यहां पे देख सकते हो यूजुअली कितना पोर्ट होते हैं वी यूजुअली मेक अ फोर पोर्ट्स थ्रू द फोर पोर्ट्स विल गो एंड वी डू ए वी डू ए कोलिसिस्टेक्टोमी एंड डिसेक्शन कहां पे करोगे तुम डिसेक्शन करोगे इन एरिया कॉल्ड कैलोट्स ट्रायंगल ठीक है चलो अगर आपने कोलिलिथियासिस पेशेंट को देखे थे पर ट्रीटमेंट नहीं ठीक है तो व्हाट कैन हैपन पेशेंट कैन डेवलप chronic cholecystitis or mucosal of the gallbladder kya ho jayega dekho ye gallbladder aisa hai theek hai 
ये कोई एक स्टोन के वजह से ना ऐसा ऑब्स्ट्रक्शन हो गया ये ऑब्स्ट्रक्शन हो रहा था कंटिन्यूसली सो बिकॉज ऑफ दैट देयर विल बी एक्सेसिव म्यूकस जो भी हो गया यहां पे अक्यूमुलेट हो जाएगा सो बिकॉज ऑफ दैट एनलार्जमेंट ऑफ द गॉल ब्लैडर विल अकर लीडिंग टू म्यूकोसील ऑफ द गॉल then patient can also have impairment of motility of the gall bladder that is acute 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 calculus cholecystitis that is due to stone okay or maybe because of the impairment of the tone also there can be cholecystitis which can occur then there can be empyema of the gall bladder remember empyema actual definition kya hota hai pus in a empty cavities pus in a natural body cavity तो एग्जैक्टली दिस कॉम्प्लिकेशन कैन अकर पस इन ए गल ब्लैडर ओके देन देयर कैन बी मिरिजी सिंड्रोम देयर कैन बी मिरिजी सिंड्रोम एंड पोस्ट कोलिसिस्टेक्टमी सिंड्रोम हीमोबिलिया हीमोबिलिया कैन अकर ओके एंड आल्सो फिस्टुला ऑफ द गल ब्लैडर्स कैन आल्सो अकर ओके तो ये देखो सो वी वी हैव टू अंडरस्टैंड हियर सो इफ देयर इज अ कोलिडोकोली कोलिलिथियासिस और इफ द पेशेंट कैन आल्सो डेवलप कोलिडोकोलिथियासिस ठीक है तो ट्रीटमेंट क्या करोगे अगर कहाँ जाएगा इंटेस्टाइन के अंदर चलेगा ओके सो दट इज ऑल्सो ए पॉसिबल थिंग and also there can be what is that there can be poly dopolithiasis as i told you people stone will come and get struck in the bile duct common bile duct mein rah jayega so that will lead to poly dopolithiasis so tab bhi ercp sphincterotomy etc etc okay so with this much being said let's take a small break of 15 minutes then we will come back and we will continue with the rest
All right. Welcome back. So let's talk about the next important aspect that is your pancreas, right? So when we need to start with the pancreas, when we need to start with the pancreas, what exactly we need to understand? So I told you people here we have one image. Look at this basket. Okay. What is the name of this basket? Okay. So, I told CBD stone extraction with a dharmia basket. So, CBD stone extraction with a dharmia basket is what? This is your dharmia basket. Okay. So, let's get into the next aspect, pancreatitis. See, pancreatitis can be divided into two types, acute and chronic pancreatitis. Now, when we are talking about acute and chronic pancreatitis, acute and chronic pancreatitis, so let's start with the easiest thing to be understood first. What is that? Acute pancreatitis. So, acute pancreatitis is very easy. We have our pancreas like this comes here. We have a pancreatic duct. If anything causes obstruction of pancreatic duct, it will lead to acute pancreatitis. Okay. So, one of the most common causes is gallstones. Another common cause is alcohol. Okay. Here, what happens is that in the acute pancreatitis, there are three stages. So, <clears throat> three stages. One is called as interstitial pancreatitis, then edematic pancreatitis, then followed by the autonecrosis or autodigestion of the pancreas, acute necrotizing or hemorrhagic pancreatitis. So, this hemorrhagic pancreatitis will create some signs for us. They are very important. Okay. So, patient comes to you with the clinical features of pain in the abdomen, especially periumbilical region. Okay. Patient can also develop shock because of the hemorrhage. Okay, anorexia, nausea, vomiting, but the most important remember the patient can have ascites, pleural effusion can be there. Okay, so patient will have two types of signs. What is that? One is called as greater nerve sign, one is called as Cullen sign. These both are image based question IBQs, which has been asked to at least two to three times. Okay, so if the bleeding, the first image will be your Cullen sign. What is that? Cullen sign. What is this Cullen sign? Our first image is very easy to understand. So around the umbilicus, if hemorrhagic pancreas hemorrhage is there, then we call it as a Cullen sign. Okay. For example, for example, in the groin region, in the groin region, we will get this one. We call it as what is that? We call it as a gray turner sign. So, gray turners and cullens are a sign of hemorrhagic pancreatitis. Okay. So, so clinical approach is what? Clinical approach, my dear students, if secondary infections are there, then we need to start an antibiotic. If not, no need. Okay. So, what exactly we are going to do? See, first and most important, we are going to investigate. What is the two enzymes we are going to use? Pancreatic amylase and lipase. If you want to choose one best answer, always choose the, the currently clinically best investigation we use is pancreatic lipase. Okay. Now, investigation of choice is CT scan can be done. What can be done? CT scan can be done. So, treatment will be what? See, the problem was due to obstruction. So, obstruction should be treated by what? ERCP. Okay, ERCP followed by that. You are going to do what? Sphincterotomy, cut the sphincter, then stone removal. Okay, so for example, we are going to go for a surgery indication. So, surgical indication will be if pancreatic abscess is there, if there is a severe necrosis of the pancreas or pancreatic pseudocyst, pancreatic pseudocyst, the investigation of choice again will be CT scan. So, these are the scenarios where you are going to use what is that? Surgical treatment. Now, when we are talking about a chronic pancreatitis, see, chronic pancreatitis is different thing. Chronic pancreatitis, what happens is that, so long term, long term, there was a long term repeated acute, repeated attacks of acute pancreatitis can lead to chronic pancreatitis. So, if there is a chronic pancreatitis, remember the pancreatic duct is stenosed. Okay. So, because of that, pancreatic enzymes will not come. So, pancreatic amylase will not come, pancreatic lipases will not come and proteolytic enzymes are not there. So, now because of lack of these enzymes like amylase or like for example lipase, so absorption will not be there. Means digestion of carbohydrates will also impair, digestion of fats also, digestion of proteins also will impair. Okay. So, the patient will have what? Malabsorption. The most important is malabsorption. Okay. Absorption will be impaired of all three substances. Then patient will have abdominal pain, agreed. 
and diabetes mellitus can arise because pancreatic function, the pancreas is being destroyed and pancreatic function is impaired. If pancreatic function is impaired, then what can occur? What can occur is what the patient can develop a diabetes-like symptoms, okay? So approach is either we can go for MRCP or we can go for ERCP. Both of them can be done, okay? So if at all you do a ERCP in the chronic pancreatitis, uh, chronic pancreatitis, you are going to get this type of appearance this type of appearance so how to understand so remember in the ERCP so the black the highlighted structure whatever you are finding here so this is endoscope let's keep what is this this is your endoscope okay always above the endoscope whatever the structure you are looking will be common by that okay then perpendicular to endoscope whatever pipe you will be looking at that will be your pancreatic duct so in this pancreatic duct, you are going to get an appearance called as this appearance only called as chain of legs appearance. What is that? Chain of legs appearance. So what is that? Chain of legs appearance will be there. So if chain of legs appearance will be there, that will be in the ERCP you are going to get. Okay. So what is the treatment? Treatment will be analgesics. So that will be pain management. Then we will not advise the patient to take a large meal at once, but rather we will advise for a small and frequent meal. Okay. So this is a very, very important aspect. For, but for example, if you want to go for even further surgical treatment, we can go for one thing directly. We can attach. See here, here you have your, what is that? A jejunum. And here you have pancreas. So pancreas and jejunum from side to side, we can do the anastomosis called as PJ, pancreatic or jejunostomy. Or we can do here as we are doing longitudinal, longitudinal pancreatic jejunostomy or we have one more surgery called as pastoral operation. So these are the surgical procedures. So sir, what and all to be remembered from the pancreatitis? After alcohol or gallstones, point number one. Point number two, ERCP can be a treatment apart also. ERCP can also treat the pancreatitis. Point number three, point number three is what? The most important surgical treatment if they ask you. So side to side pancreatic jejunostomy can be done. And the best investigation we use uh, from the enzymes will be pancreatic lipase. But radiological investigation of choice, if they ask you what will be the answer, uh, then your answer is going to be radiological investigation of choice will be CECP, abdomen, CT abdomen. If at all, if they ask you just a best investigation, then you are going to go with your, very good. What is that? Uh, that will be your pancreatic lens. Very good. Okay. So, Let's talk about the intestines. So in the intestines, when we are discussing, the first and most important disease which I want to talk here is, what is that? Hirschsprung disease. So in the Hirschsprung disease, what happens is that, see, it is a congenital condition. So in this congenital condition, the problem here is that, see, I told you people, we have nerve plexus in the intestine. So what exactly we have? So the nerve plexus are responsible for the motility. Now, here what happens, there is a congenital absence of ganglion cells. Okay. If congenital absence of ganglionic plexus or myentric nerve plexus, because of which what will happen, consider for example, colon is there, intestine, right? Now, in a part of intestine, just imagine a part of intestine, let's keep this part of the intestine, did not have the ganglionic cells. If there is no ganglionic cells, this part will become narrow. Now, what will happen? Stools, whatever is there, it will not pass. If it will not pass, this colon will become enlarged called as a megacolon. So, congenital megacolon caused as a result of absence of nerve plexus. Okay. Now, here we need to pay attention to two things. One is, one is your, what is that? Diagnosis itself. So, the proof that there is no ganglionic cell. Another one is how long the ganglionic cells are absent. Okay. So, most common site is rectosigmoid, always involved. It will be associated with a Down syndrome, okay. So, if ganglionic segment, so there are two things. One is ganglionic cells itself, another one is length of the segment, okay. If a ganglionic segment, if a ganglionic segment is long, then what is going to happen? If it is short, what is going to happen? See, if it is a long length, so for example, this much length of the ganglion was not there. So, if because of that, all this area was coming. So, immediately after birth, neonatal intestinal obstruction will come if long. If it is short, means childhood constipation can occur. Okay. So, now I need to prove that there is no ganglionic cell. For that only, we will do a biopsy, suction rectal biopsy. Okay. But for length of the segment, 
how long it is absent to know that barium enema can be used. Okay. So, barium is not used for which work? Ah, when there is a perforation. Okay. So, surgical treatment will be, we have multiple surgical procedures such as Duhamel's operation. Then we have Sevenson's operation. Okay. Save and park operation. Okay. Save and park coloanal anastomosis. That means what we are going to do is not question here. Colon or anus ko jodi. So, kya hai ki itna segment mein nahi ta. Phir yaham pe kya tha? Anal kya tha. तो आप क्या करो इसको पूरा सर्जिकली रिमूव करो ठीक है अब कुछ भी करके कोलोन एंड एनस को जोड़ दो सो हियर यू कैन सी ए पार्ट जहां पे देखो बेरियम एनेमा दिया था बेरियम वेयर एवर बेरियम इज देयर दैट विल लुक ब्राइट कलर तो यहां पे आप नोटिस करोगे तो दिस एरिया दिस एरिया इज नॉट इल्यूमिनेटेड नॉट लाइक नॉट हाइलाइटेड बिकॉज़ कंट्रास्ट वहां पे नहीं पहुंच तो हमें इसका मतलब क्या हुआ दिस इज एंग्लियोनिक सेगमेंट ओके लेट्स गो टू द नेक्स्ट टू दिस इज मेकल्स डाइवर्टिकुलम तो मेकल्स डाइवर्टिकुलम होता क्या है मेकल्स वन सेकेंड Hello, sorry, sorry for the interruption. Okay, so Meckel's diverticulum. Now Meckel's diverticulum, Meckel's diverticulum is what? Meckel's diverticulum is a true diverticulum due to presence of intestinal end of the vitello intestinal duct. What do I mean by this? अरे बहुत simple है देखो। तो consider this is the anterior abdominal wall, anterior abdominal wall। तो we have a duct called as vitello intestinal duct। तो एक duct होता है, so that duct is communicating the this part, especially that is your umbilicus and the intestine, and the intestine in the duct। तो अब इसमें क्या होता है? We can divide this into two types. So that is abdominal part of this duct and also intestinal part of this duct. Okay. Now in this, what will happen is that, what will happen is that, the abdominal part will become closed, this intestinal part will remain like that only. So what will happen is that duct. So that will create called as white yellow intestinal duct partial closure creating what is that? Creating your what is that? Meckel's diverticulum. So Meckel's diverticulum is a what is that? What is that? That is your that is your what is that? Intestinal part of the intestinal part of the diverticulum will remain like that only. Okay. It is usually a type of congenital. Okay. Usually anti-mesentric border. Ye bhi bhoat log confuse hoate. Ye border ka bhi samajh nahi chahiye. So you take your intestine. Okay, for example, large intestine like this. Okay, now large intestine, if this is the intestine, that intestine is held to the abdomen. Okay, so one anterior abdominal wall, one posterior. Now intestine is holding to the structure. So intestine and mesentery, mesentery is holding the intestine straight like this. So if anything is towards the mesentric side, we call it as a mesentric border. Towards the mesentery, mesentric border. Opposite to that of mesentery, we call it as an anti-mesentric border. So, either kya hoga, tumhara mesentery hoga aisa, hai na? This will be your mesentery, intestine ka blood supply hoga aisa. Ye border banega tumhara anti-mesentric border. Hamesha ye kaam pe hoga anti-mesentric border. And rule of two, rule of two matlab kya hoata? Usually it is two centimeter wide, two inch long, okay? And located two feet to the ileocecal junction and it will affect two percentage of the population. Okay. Ab iske andar 20% heterotrophic epithelium means the epithelium will be different here. Means kya hota hai? About 20% it will not just be intestinal epithelium. Usually it will be what is that? Gastric epithelium. Okay. So gastric epithelium aega to kya hoga? Acid production aja. Thik hai? So usually asymptomatic kuch karega nahi. It won't be do anything. But, but. But sometimes it can make the acute appendicitis. Q, 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 Q,
इट कैन मिनिंग ओके तो व्हाट आर द कॉम्प्लिकेशन सो वेयर एवर देयर इज अ डाइवर्टिकुलर उसको कुछ मत ठीक है अंटिल एंड अनलेस इफ इट डज नॉट कॉज एनी प्रॉब्लम such as there is 20% of heterotrophic epithelium so gastric epithelium acid production can cause bleeding okay so bleeding and diverticulitis because stool accumulation or there is that can lead to perforation okay then then also that can lead to peptic ulceration peptic ulceration okay so peptic ulceration there can lead to into susception into susception means one loop of the intestine getting stuck into the another loop of the intestine that can lead to intestinal obstruction as well now is can the investigation is very interesting investigation is the meckel scan with technetium pertechnetic hota kya hai dekho we will use a technetium pertechnet to ye technetium pertechnet will be taken up by few structures of the body such as your salivary glands theek hai such as your wherever wherever your for example gastric epithelium is there to normally maine bola tha kya 20% heterotrophic epithelium so in that 20% what epithelium is there gastric epithelium so in that gastric epithelium if i give technetium technetium will be taken up by whom stomach alone technetium will be taken up by whom stomach alone okay but because of meckel's diverticular that gastric epithelium jo tha 20% heterotrophic epithelium mein so now meckel's meckel's diverticular also takes up and in the lower abdomen we can find this that finding is what technetium per technet matlab technetium per technet when given to a person it will be taken up by salivary glands point number 1 it will be taken up by gastric epithelium now wherever there is a gastric epithelium there and all it will become dark like this are right? hot spot we can call this okay now hot spot whenever there is a hot spot agar hot spot ban raha hai to hot spot ka indicator ka kya aata hai hot spot indicator is what indicating that epithelium is there so if epithelium is there so 20% epithelium that means it is a meckel's diverticulum okay so remember one of the most important aspect we can also go for other investigations such as uh, barium study but not very accurate then we have double balloon enteroscopy and video capsule endoscopy okay so what do i mean by this so here look here first let's understand this to a image you can understand so this is a double balloon enteroscopy a enteroscopy ka kya scene hota hai first we will pass an endoscope we will inflate first balloon taki endoscope stabilize ho jaye then we will pass the further part of the endoscope then stabilize it and we can pass the camera or we can use a video capsule endoscopy yes so if at all there is no symptoms asymptomatic no treatment is required no treatment is required but if there is a narrow mouth then diverticulotomy can be done if it is wide mouth what we can do so listen to me what i am trying to tell you consider this a part of intestine with a narrow mouth diverticula like this okay so now what i can do i can easily just what i can do i can easily just cut this part okay and what i can do i can just suture it up done but if it is a wide mouth the problem is like this wide mouth diverticular like this now what will happen if it just cut open one particular area look here the discrepancy is going to be very long now what i can do is that rather than doing this uh, procedure i can just cut the this area of the full in the both sides of intestine and then i will attach this key so what i am doing resection and anastomosis so once we understood about that let's go to the important aspect of intussusception so intussusception is very easy to understand dekho one part of the intestine is going into the another part of the other loop of the intestine so invagination one part of the intestine into adjacent bowel loop okay so most common age is 6 months age it is most commonly seen in children okay so most common cause is hypertrophic peyer patches hypertrophic peyer patches when you can see we can see them after any infection or vaccination so especially after followed by rota viral vaccine followed by rota viral vaccine and also typhoid can also increase its risk okay most commonly ileocolic what do i mean by this ileocolic intussusception ileum ileum and colon undergoes intussusception and in the adults there will be colocolic in the adult there will be colocolic intussusception now clinical feature sausage lump in the right hemicolon so olive lump in the chps sausage like lump in the right hemicolon this is also very important now now remember remember there is a one 
very characteristic one that is a red current jelly stool. Red current jelly stool is a characteristic for the intersubsection. Okay. Now, because of this invagination, what would have happened is intestines will move. Okay. So, in the right iliac fossa, we will feel like as if there is an emptiness. Okay. And this is a very, very favorite disease for the examiner, especially image based question. Okay, because a lot and lot of what is that lot and lot of signs are there. Okay, so in the investigation, the first investigation is uh, followed by physical examination and all. Yes, the target sign will be there on the USD abdomen or also called as donut sign. And x-ray, we can find crescent sign or also called as meniscus sign. In barium minima, we are going to find something called as claw sign. Okay, first let's look at one by one. Okay, this is your donut array, donut array target sign. Here intestine is looking as if there is a claw of the eagle, looking like a claw of the eagle. Okay. And this area actually if you zoom in, it will look here, it will look like as if some spring is coiled. That is only coiled spring sign. Okay. So best investigation is CECT. So aim is what? Aim is to remove these two things from one thing. Okay. So first we can try by air enema. But we can also consider like saline and barium enema. Saline and barium enema if possible. Now, for example, we gave a air enema, we tried if it fails. Okay. So, in, you are going to surgically open the abdomen and you are going to remove this invasion. So, intraoperatively, one rule that is intraoperative technique never pull, always push. No, no, where you are thinking that is not the thing. Okay. What I am trying to tell you is that. So, both the intestines are invaginated like this. Don't go and pull these tools subsequently. Because when you pull this them like this, na, it will immediately do what? It will immediately come into two pieces in your hand. Okay. Rather than that, what you can do is that slowly you push this loop out. This one, you push it like this. Okay. So, never ever pull, but rather slowly push it. Because when you are pushing it, na, you are not going to apply extra force. I, there is no tendency for tearing of the intestine. Or even if there is a necrosis or something else, it is a very easy perforation. Can happen. So, let us talk about the appendix. So, when we are talking about appendix, so for us clinically to navigate the appendix in the abdominal wall, that is located in the right iliac fossa. So, we are going to use a point called as McBurney point. So, McBurney point is what? Anterior superior iliac spine and umbilicus. B from between these two, anterior superior iliac spine and umbilicus. Let us consider this is the umbilicus. This is the anterior superior iliac spine. So, let us put one imaginary line. Let us divide into three divisions. Okay. So, from umbilicus one third and from umbilicus from umbilicus two-thirds, from the umbilicus two-third, from the anterior superior iliac spine one-third. That meeting point we would call it as a McBurney's point. Okay. Now this McBurney point agree. Now the appendix, right? Appendix C, if you if look at here, so there is a cecum, right? So this is a cecum. Right? So from the cecum, normally consider this is the cecum. Okay. Cecum is ending here, appendix C. Now, appendix, there is no rule that uh, it is freely located always in where? In the, in the right iliac fossa. So, it can be in multiple places. Uh, so, this is the ileum. The appendix can be located post ileum. It can be just be before the ileum called pre ileum or it can be located in the iliac fossa or pelvic. The appendix, half of the appendix can pass below the, below the cecum called as the subsecal. Or it can go just behind the cecum called as retrocecal. These are the positions for the appendix. Okay. Now, when we are talking about acute appendicitis, most important one, most common cause is fecal. They are not going to ask you the cause, but but most importantly, clinical feature. Patient will have a migratory right iliac fossa pain. What do I mean by this? First, it will start with a generalized abdominal pain. Then that abdominal well pain will focus into the right iliac fossa only. Then patient will also have one of the very important sign of appendicitis is actually anorexia. Okay. But uh, well, anorexia can be seen with multiple other diseases also. So it will not become a specific symptom. Nausea, vomiting, low grade fever that will be there. Why? Because there is an inflammation. Okay. Now patient comes to you with the complaints of right iliac fossa pain and tenderness and rebound tenderness in the abdomen. So rebound tenderness means see when you are 
pressing the abdomen if you get the tenderness that is normal tenderness we can call when you leave your hand when you take your hand that time if you get a tenderness called as a rebound tenderness and muscle guarding muscle guarding means when you try to palpate the abdomen patient will make the muscles very tight okay then also elevated level of neutrophils okay so we have we have one of the best investigation is CECT, others initial investigation is USD. Okay. So treatment, if mild form is there, conservative treatment with antibiotics can be considered. If wilder form, then it can be, what is that? That will be your, what is that? That will be your surgical appendectomy. So for that only we have a scoring system called as Montreal scoring system. Montreal's scoring system. Okay. So that scoring gives you 10 points. Okay. Right. So for that, one of the most important preoperatively first we need to localize where is the appendix for the localization of the appendix we have points such as McBurney's sign so if you press the right iliac fossa if pain also occurs in the right iliac fossa then it should be McBurney's sign positive it should be retrocede then there is a rose wing sign if you put a pressure in the right iliac sorry if you put a pressure in the left iliac fossa the pain will arise in the right iliac fossa look at this okay so you press on the left iliac fossa because so if this is the cecum right so if the appendix is like this along with the cecum what will happen is that if you put from the pressure from the left iliac fossa also just if you press the automatically all the intestine is going to press this now if the if appendix gets pressed pain will come in the inflamed appendix then we have obturator sign okay obturator sign is internal rotation of the hip creates a right iliac fossa pain called as a pelvic appendix we also use psoas sign what is that hyper extension of the hip joint will lead to which will show you retrocecal retrocecal appendix so by hyper extension of the hip if you get right iliac fossa pain then we have a dumpy sign right iliac fossa pain by cuffing but which is not very specific to any particular disease so here also again we have two types of techniques for the incision during appendectomy. One day one is there muscle splitting technique. One is muscle cutting technique. Okay. So that muscle splitting technique called as McBurney's and Lance incision. Cosmetically very superior ones. You must remember this McBurney's incision. Muscle cutting. There is something called as Rocky Davis incision. Now what do I mean by this? So you are cutting the muscle and you can extend it. Okay. If you extend the incision medially, that is called as Fowler's. Laterally, that is called as Rutherford Morrison's incision. Okay. So these are some points which has to be directly remembered. Okay. So what are the complications we are going to get? The complications we are going to get is uh, what is that? So surgical site infection. Okay. Then most importantly, if you do any surgery on the intestine, you can get adhesive intestinal obstruction. You can get what is that adhesive intestinal obstruction okay this is a very very important one so if there is a previous history of previous history of surgery on the intestine after two years three years there is a high risk of patient developing intestinal obstruction okay then patient can develop appendicular abscess and appendicular mass so appendicular mass treatment appendicular mass if it is there we are not going to do the immediate surgery rather we admit the patient and we treat him based on a regime called as a Oshner sharing regime okay then appendicular abscess is there means you can try it right so let's go to the next one that is diverticulosis of the colon what is this diverticulosis of the colon very simple i told you people right we have for example a steak intestine okay colon large intestine now large intestine is attached to the abdominal wall with what with a mesentery with what mesentery is attached like this i told you this all of us now as age goes age goes now what will happen these mesentery is pulling the intestine like this okay in old age people what can happen is that here there can be out pouches like this okay we call it as what diverticulosis of the colon okay most common site sigmoid colon but rectum is usually spared remember rectum is not involved in this elderly okay so the patient can also it can be associated with a false diverticular remember false diverticular means all the layers is not involved if true diverticular means all the layers will be involved in the diverticular okay so 
this diverticulosis of the colon can be a part of a triad called as Saint's triad. Now, what is this Saint's triad? The patient will have three things together, hiatus hernia, cholelithiasis, and colonic diverticulosis. Okay. Usually seen on which border? Of course, now it is the mesenteric border. Now, Meckel's diverticula in the anti-mesenteric border. So, usually asymptomatic, sometimes patient complains of left iliac fossa pain. Patient can develop constipation. Okay. Now, complications such as bleeding, diverticulitis, perforation, it is same as that of Meckel's diverticula. But uh, here, see, investigation of choice is barium enema. Okay. And most importantly, we do not advise the patients for, of this case uh, to undergo colonoscopy because they have a high risk of perforation. So usually better one is barium enema. If at all very much needed, then only we are going to do what is that? We are going to do a colonoscopy. So what is the treatment? Treatment will be, so whichever area is involved in the anastomosis, in, uh, in the colonic diverticulosis, cut this area and do a anastomosis. So elective resection and anastomosis. So, if it is perforated, then there we are going to do a peritoneal lavage. Okay, peritoneal lavage. Okay, and proximal colostomy are also called as Hartman operation can be done. Okay, can be done. Now, look here. This is the barium enema picture of what is that? That is your diverticulosis of the colon. Diverticulosis of the colon. Okay. So, these are the important factors to be remembered. Now, once we have done with this, Let's do some questions. That is very, very important question. So with questions, we'll conclude our revision. So here, the, with the question, we will do large part of general surgery. Okay. So let's look at the questions here. A 45 year old man presented with a diffuse abdominal pain, shallow breathing, on, on palpation, rigidity, guarding all over the abdomen present, was done a erect abdominal x-ray, revealed the following picture. So if we look at this, here, the patient is having what? Very good. Air under the diaphragm. Under which dome of the diaphragm? Hmm. Under which dome of the diaphragm? Right dome of the diaphragm. Okay. So, if there is a, if there is a air under the diaphragm, that is suggesting you of what is that? A pneumoperitoneum. Pneumoperitoneum means it is a complication of peptic ulcer disease. So, perforated first acute gastritis? No. Acute gastritis present to us with what? Hematemesis and melina. Hematemesis and melina. Then we have what is that? Perforated esophagus. Esophageal perforation will occur with what? Borihavi syndrome. If non-complicated duodenal ulcer is there means uh, that is not a complicated scenario that clearly telling you what? It is a non-complicated only symptomatic. What is the complication of a duodenal ulcer? Perforation. So perforation says you what is a complicated duodenal ulcer. That is clearly telling you what is that? Air under the what is the investigation of choice for intracranial hemorrhage? Remember any head injury, any head injury, the best investigation is always NCCT, never CECT, not CECT, not CECT, okay? Now, anywhere you want to find a fluid-filled lesion, then you do a USCT, okay? Anywhere you want to look at a soft tissue, you are going to go for a MR, okay? CECT is not investigation of choice for for your intracranial hemorrhage. Remember NCCT. And one more place in the, in the very good, in the renal stones. That is also a most important NCCT investigation of choice. 34 year old female came to the hospital with the complaints of breast lump. On history it was found out that she had a first degree relative with a ovarian cancer. Which of the following is the best radiological screening? So remember in a breast cancer patient, breast cancer patient, we have to understand if at all the patient is having lump, okay, now and also if there is a first degree relative, that is clearly telling you that the patient is a high risk of cancer. So, if any person who is having breast implants, okay, nulli parity along with that breast lump is there, if you want to go for a, what is that? That will be your screening method. Always prefer MRI. So, high risk patient with a lump, high risk patient with a lump, the best answer is MRI, okay. Now, FNAC is what? FNAC is a histopathological technique. So, yeah, better than FNAC we have for histopathology of the breast cancer is true cut biopsy. Okay. Then here we have what is that? Mammography. Mammography in the age more than, in the age more than what is that? 30. Here USG in a younger female. 
US in a younger female. Okay. Let's go to the next one. A 70 year old female after total knee replacement was immobilized. So we have done a surgery. We have replaced her complete knee. After that, after that, has a unilateral swelling in the leg. Okay. Pain in the calf region was suspected of DVT. See, post orthopedic surgery after immobilization, there is a high risk of deep vein thrombosis. All of us. Which of the following suits the given condition? So all of us know that for the DVT, for the DVT, we have a triad called as virtuo triad. Virtuo triad. Now virtuo triad includes what and all? Hypercoagulable state is also a virtuo triad. Endothelial injury also virtuo triad. Stasis also virtuo. But among these three, which is causing in this case scenario? Yes, that, that is immobilization. If it is not moving, blood is remaining in one place, only correct answer is stasis. But all of them are a part of what? Yes, with children. Okay. Eight week preg pregnant female with complaints of sweating, tremor, diarrhea, heart rate is increased to 108, BP is 140 by 80. Okay, reveals elevated FT3 and FT4 and TSH and with a low TSH should be prescribed which of the following. Now, why did I get it here? Because, because don't think always the treatment is surgery. So, what exactly is that? Pregnant female comes to you with a thyroid diseases, especially hyperthyroidism. See, heart rate is elevated, BP is elevated. It's clearly hyperthyroid patient. And they're clearly telling what is that? Elevated FT3 and FT4. Okay, so in that case scenario, what should be the treatment? So remember, if the pregnant female up to 12 weeks, up to 12 weeks, the best drug is propyl thiouracil. More than 12 weeks, up to up to 12 weeks, what is that? Up to 12 weeks, propyl thiouracil. More than 12 weeks pregnancy, then you can go for carbimazole or methimazole. Radio iodine is contraindicated. Carbimazole and methimazole are contraindicated in First trimester, first trimester, contraindicated in first trimester hyperthyroidism. What is a non-surgical treatment for keloid? So non-surgical treatment is what exactly we are going to give? Intra C. The drug of choice is triamsolon. I know that, but uh, most of the people will get confused whether IV triamsolon, uh, intradermal, or oral. No, all three of them are wrong. We are directly going to inject uh, into the lesion. We are going to inject into the lesion, intra lesional triamsolon. Okay. Name the instrument and use and its use respectively. So if you look at this, it is not a needle holder. Okay. So Langenbeck retractor, Doyen retractor, and Joel's retractor. Remember, this instrument is a Joel's retractor. It is used for the thyroid surgery. A 75-year-old male with varicose vein for a long time came to the hospital with the ulcer given below. All of the following are used in the treatment except so varicose vein patient is having some ulcer like this. So it is a case of venous ulcer. Venous ulcer. Okay. So for a patient with venous ulcer, what is the question? Let's look again. All of the following is a treatment regime except. Okay. So remember, remember. Venous ulcer, the most important is vacuum dressing. Yes, we will do. Compression stocking. Yes, we are supposed to do because venous return will be improved and ulcer can be healed properly. Now, educate the patient. Yes, of course, we need to educate the patient also. You are not going to elevate the head. Okay. Actually, the correct answer is elevation of the head is the because we are asking which except. We are asking what? Except. So, in the except, elevation of the head is not done. Rather, we are going to go for a leg elevation. So, limb elevation, vacuum dressing, compression stocking, education of the patient are the regime of your venous ulcer treatment. Okay. After road traffic accident, patient was brought to the emergency room. Okay. With, with injury to the chest. Okay. On examination, BP is 90 over 60. Means patient is point number one, hypotensive. Heart rate is 95. Okay. ECG was done and chest x-ray was done. They are given below. If you look at a ECG here, if you look at here, let's take for example, lead one, lead two. Okay. Or if you take any lead. Okay. The magnitude of R wave has become what? Decreased. Point, point to be paid attention. Magnitude of the R wave is decreased. And if I look at a chest x-ray here, what exactly is that? Yes, 
here what is happening here there is a appearance called as money bag appearance money bag appearance okay so what is the treatment so what is the treatment so cardiomegaly cardiomegaly is not an answer key why not an answer because remember what is that cardiomegaly is due to hypertrophy okay if it is pneumothorax heart would not be involved heart will involve but here the pneumothorax signs are there then then left hemothorax no it is not hemothorax why not hemothorax because because cp angle is not in blunt okay and here clear cut magnitude is decreased so the answer is cardiac tamponade so cardiac tamponade is are the, is due to penetrating or blunt injury to the heart leading to the bleeding in the pericardium pericardial sac so because of that bleeding what will happen pressure will be put on the heart because of the bleed so because of that because of that we are going to get a triad called as bex triad what is bex triad muffled heart sound very good muffled heart sound then there is a there is a decreased bp and a dilation of the neck veins or dilation of the head and neck veins that is only your bex triad okay which of the following is true about the given picture except okay so except pucha gaya hai then do except now first and most important what is this this is a ranula okay now ranula so ranula is a lesion where there is what is that damage of the sublingual glands okay means below that tongue we have salivary glands right they will get damaged now this is the salivary gland huh? now the gland is damaged if the gland is damaged what will happen let's see if the gland is damaged what will happen saliva will come out and saliva is accumulated here it is just a saliva okay so in that scenario what will be the what will be the consequence we are going to get a ranula now it is just a saliva film so if we pass a light through it like how we discussed in hydrocil right so it is transilluminated yes transillumination will occur it is due to damage of the sublingual glands and the treatment procedure itself is called as marsupialization it is not because of corpus accumulation but it is rather because of saliva accumulation okay this is a point to be remembered in burn all are used except okay in the burn rule of 9 that is wallis rule of 9 is used but nowadays clinically we don't follow wallis rule of 9 rather we use lund and browder formula okay now this is a, this is a modified version modified version okay then yes it can be used but we don't use them clinically nowadays we have a advanced formula called as london browder formula and you don't have to calculate or remember anything why because bahut simple baat hai in every like in every place whenever wherever in plastic surgery or in the surgical wards or burn units they will have this already readily printed on the case sheets okay then then half of the total required fluids used in first aid us remember whatever for example 2 liter fluid is required for example in that in that 1 liter we are going to give over the first aid us and the another another 1 liter we are going to give for the rest of the time okay okay so now look here rest over 16 hours okay yashkara tummy done when needed yes what is yashkar yashkar is nothing but a leather like scarf it's actually what happens now so when skin get burnt epithelium get burnt that will become leather like consistency for example if eschar is formed on the neck right it can put the pressure on what a trachea and patient can die immediately so to avoid that we need to cut that eschar so that is only called as eschcarotomy okay so fluids intramuscularly no we are not going to give intramuscularly of course intravenously but what will happen is that during the day of exam you will not read this intramuscular and you start to get confused oh my god what is this okay now don't focus on the girl okay focus on the question a female underwent a mastectomy for the breast cancer developed a asymmetry in her shoulder blades given in the picture below okay so like this here okay so what is the possible so that is a nerve of bell or long thoracic nerve injury can occur okay that is because of that is that is because of what is that post surgical complication okay then there is a bulging of the intestine in the inguinal region through the abdominal wall okay diagnosed as a direct inguinal hernia name the weak area okay now this weak area is called as hesselbach's triangle okay what is this hesselbach's triangle we have 
abdominal rectus muscle we have inguinal ligament inguinal ligament and a hypogastric vessels hypogastric vessels so because of these three structure we are getting an area called as a we are getting a triangle called as a hasselbeck triangle if any content comes out from this hasselbeck triangle we call it as a direct inguinal hernia the answer is hasselbeck triangle okay if anything comes out to the inguinal ring then we are going to consider it as what is that indirect inguinal hernia okay so remember the next question patient has a venous ulcer on the medial malleolus of the leg caused by varicose veins okay this pathological area is drained by simple medial malleolus from the medial malleolus we have which vein long septus from the lateral malleolus this also a direct mcq from the lateral malleolus we have short saphenous vein it will drain into yes popliteal vein okay this long saphenous vein directly it will drain into yes saphano femoral junction and goes into the femoral vein okay so medullary carcinoma of the thyroid gland tumor marker is calcitonin all of you know that okay so this is a very important alpha fetoprotein is a cancer marker for seminoma and also hepatocellular cancer now now why medullary thyroid has calcitonin because medullary thyroid cancer involves para follicular cell para follicular cells produce calcitonin that is the reason okay myoglobin urea is seen in which type of burn remember in the myoglobin urea will be associated with electric burn because because of electric burns what will happen rhabdomyolysis will occur break down okay so this rhabdomyolysis will allow the release of lot of amount of what is that myoglobin which is a very dangerous condition which will immediately progress into acute renal failure i know that so this is which question i know this is the questions which will miss from either from forensic also from surgery also it will might get difficult that is why i brought up all these uh, all these confusing questions for you people to be solved okay most common cause of uh, parotid swelling in a 27 year old male okay remember parotid gland swelling parotiditis i agree but it is a unilateral so if at all you are looking most common tumor is always remember that is pleomorphic adenoma so structure preserved in radical neck dissection we are going to save the vagus nerve rest other things are removed okay this and all is a direct point to be remembered lucid interval is seen only with the edh extra dural hematomas okay means uh, patient will have a trauma unconsciousness he will regain he will think everything is fine but after the some time he will lose the consciousness so between two loss of consciousness times uh, the awareness is only called as lucid interval that is why when there is a head injury just don't send them home without analyzing if the patient is in lucid interval patient can become unconscious later also okay second degree epithelial second degree burns epithelialization direct question 7 to 14 days no question no discussions to be made here this is a direct question okay so what is the most probable diagnosis in the baby okay brachial cyst okay ludwig's angina thyroglossal cyst solitary thyroid nodule so all of us know what is that the answer is thyroglossal cyst okay now thyroglossal cyst remember two points here one point is that ind incision and drainage is absolutely contraindicated and the treatment is cyst trunk operation treatment is cyst trunk operation okay so all are true about pneumothorax except so the elastic fibers in the lung causes lung to collapse yes lungs will collapse okay the parietal pleura and visceral pleura are separated from one another yes of course okay a tension pneumothorax mediastinum may deviate towards the side with the pneumothorax this is impossible this is a wrong statement how do we know this very simple consider this is your lung lung is covered by a layer called as visceral pleura okay and one more layer will be parietal now between this visceral pleura and parietal pleura what will happen let's see now if there is some damage to the lung from inside let's keep from inside okay so for example we are giving a inhalational anesthetic with a positive pressure ventilation for example okay so that time also small bullet can rupture and lead to pneumothorax hmm? now what is there 
Now, air will enter here between the pleura. So, what will happen? It will start to collapse the lung. So, if it is start to collapse the lung, what is the picture we are going to get? Something like this. Lung is collapsed. Okay. So, along with that, we have your which pleura? Yes, visceral pleura. And also, you have which pleura? Parietal. So, parietal pleura will remain in the normal shape only, but all the air is doing what? Uh, compressing the lung. So, here, what will happen is that after one point, this lung can push the mediastinum to the opposite side because here we will have the heart, right? Heart and all the mediastinal structure can be pushed to the healthy side. Be it pneumothorax, be it hemothorax, be it hydrothorax. In all of them, mediastinum will be pushed to the healthy side but not towards the pathological side. So, this is the point to be remembered. Okay. So, all of you know pneumothorax, what is the treatment? If we are doing an emergency treatment, we are going to take a large bore needle and insert it into the mid clavicular line in the second or third intercostal space but if we are going for a definitive management then what we are doing is chest tube insertion chest tube insertion with a one way valve okay so patient presents as a 32 week gestation okay and diagnosis with the antipartum hemorrhage vitals are unstable next step if management so why did i get this see remember if the patient is having a shock okay no observation nothing the first and most important aspect is that important aspect is that blood transfusion okay so immediate treatment for tension pneumothorax just now i told needle thoracotomy just now i told needle thoracotomy okay so that is immediate management definitive management is what definitive management will be chest tube insertion Sentinel lymph node biopsy is commonly done for which cancer? Now remember, this sentinel lymph node means first lymph node of any organ. This was first done by, first done in penile cancer. First done in penile cancer by a scientist called as Kavana. Okay. But most commonly used is in the breast cancer management. Okay. Okay. So, we, the breast development is associated with the tanner scale, okay. Breast lump is diagnosed by, we can either go for a FNAC. If FNAC is not there, then you can go for directly through cut biopsy. Okay. Least diagnostic tumor for the breast tumor is what? Least diagnostic, see, biopsy, yes, USG, yes, mammography. Chest x is useless because it cannot provide a view for us, okay. So, least diagnostic will be what is that? That will be your chest x -ray. Okay. So, predisposing factor for the breast cancer is all of the following except remember any condition where female has a high exposure to estrogen will lead to breast cancer and endometrial cancer. Point number. So, what are those conditions? Nulliparity. Okay. So, early menarche. Hmm? For example, for example, for example, female is having hormone replacement therapy. Okay. And for example, hmm? uh, like uh, Female was having, for example, one miscarriage and later no baby, not married. Okay, these are the one set. Another one, family history, genetic history. Okay, so all of the following predispose except, except the under, look, look here, except the first thing. Yes, high socioeconomic status, people have high risk for developing breast cancer due to lifestyle. Nulli parity, excessive exposure to estrogen. Positive family history. Positive family history means first degree or second degree cancer. But abscess does not increase the risk of breast cancer. Abscess does not increase the risk of breast cancer. All right. So this is the story of your surgery quick revision. All right. Every point which I have told can important or wherever wherever I told these are important points to be revised. So, you must focus on these points because those are the previous last very important MCQs. Thank you. Take care. And all the very best for your exam preparation. We'll be in touch.